Hi everybody, good afternoon. Uh, we'll be starting the webinar shortly in the next three minutes, which is waiting for a few people to join in. And we should start. Uh, we should Hi everybody, good afternoon. afternoon. Uh, we'll be starting the webinar shortly in the next three minutes, which is waiting for a few people to join in. And we should start. Hi everybody, good afternoon. Uh, we'll be starting the webinar shortly in the next three minutes, which is waiting for a few people to join in. And we should start. Hi everybody, good afternoon. Uh, we will be starting the webinar shortly in the next three minutes, which is waiting for a few people to join in. And we should start. Uh, we will be starting the webinar shortly in the next three minutes, which is waiting for a few people to join in. And we should start. Uh, we will be starting the webinar shortly in the next three minutes, which is waiting for a few people to join in. And we should start. Uh, we will be starting the webinar shortly in the next three minutes, which is waiting for a few people to join in. And we should start. Uh, we will be starting the webinar shortly in the next three minutes, which is waiting for a few people to join in. And we should start. Uh, we will be starting the webinar shortly in the next three minutes, which is waiting for a few people to join in. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I hope uh, you all can hear me. Fantastic. Great. Um, I hope you all uh, can hear me. We have research projects on extra months of engagement amidst COVID-19. Um, I hope you all uh, can hear me. We have research projects on extra months of engagement amidst COVID-19. Um, I hope you all uh, can hear me. We have 
our research process. We are giving this to one of them today to the next to the Uh, you can see some of them on the screen, Rajesh Nambiar, Vivek Rathod, uh, uh, Daniel Joseph and uh, Venkateshivram Krishna. Uh, uh, you can see some of them on the screen, Rajesh Nambiar, Vivek Rathod, uh, followed by uh, uh, Daniel Joseph and uh, followed by Venkateshivram Krishna. Uh, uh, you can see some of them on the screen, Rajesh Nambiar, Vivek Rathod, uh, followed by uh, uh, Daniel Joseph and uh, followed by Venkateshivram Krishna. Uh, uh, you can see some of them on the screen, Rajesh Nambiar, Vivek Rathod, uh, followed by At individual and organizational excellence. It was set up on 26 December 2000. The objective of empowering people on board and ashore. 
So we mainly the individual and organization excellence. Set up in 26 December 2000. So we mainly the empowering people on board and ashore. Coaching, mentoring. So we mainly the individual and organization excellence. Set up in 26 December 2000. So we mainly the empowering people on board and ashore. Coaching, human brand software. So we excel in the human brand domain. Uh, we don't let any of our customers, any of our human beings, be demotivated in the vision and the path they set for themselves. A customer provide manager and behavioral solutions using transformational techniques, and we have been providing service in the marine industry. Uh, we also touch more and inspire the spiritual and HR related activities. So we are bringing spirituality to the competency. Uh, you can see this book which is written, Spirituality Leadership Competency Model, and um, uh, we have divided this whole thing into a set of spirituality competencies which. Uh, we hope the Indian government will pick it up, uh, the DG shipping will pick it up and share. We call them STCW 2025 competencies, where awareness, uh, listening, you know, many of these things were uh, very rudely taken away from our syllabus in 1857. We're trying to bring that back. Who am I? Detached attachment, mindfulness, accessing intuition, resilience, crucial communication. How accountability leads to responsibility and then we should seek authority. Relationships, the foundation of our growth, reflective learning and transformation culture, spirituality management, and uh, the fifth dimension of creating possibilities. So we have unfortunately in the education system being stopped at the first four dimensions, and we are suffering the consequences of that, and we need to urgently go into the fifth dimension. Uh, we have the human development programs, uh, which from 1918, uh, sorry, 1997, we designed the human element the Vessel Resource Management course, which is an Indian genesis called Hamara Viharam. We converted that to the shore-based course called Pros, a personal and organizing responsibility for effectiveness. The Bridge Team Management, PSSR, Personal Safety and Social Responsibility, Train the Trainer Assessor, uh, Risk Management and Incident Investigation, totally from a Aham Brahmasmi perspective, Multicultural Awareness, Interviewing Skills, Maritime Labor Convention, ILO, the ISO 14,000, behavior-based safety, uh, and then the technical programs we keep to low because there are so many people providing technical programs, but we do uh, bulk area safety, tank waiting and SIA inspection, uh, EGDIS, uh, a GRC EGDIS just for a specific company, and of course our core is the extra masters course. So just to share with you the extra masters, um, you know the Indian government and the Colombo plan uh, Invested in master mariners uh, who used to get this early in the UK in order to keep cognitive skills, uh, the body of knowledge of the Indian merchant marine alive. Our gurus, uh, Captain P.S. Barbe, Captain D.K. Joseph, S.S. Rivari, Captain Subramaniam, which he, he was supposed to be in this program today. I hope he's there. And if he's there, I want to acknowledge him. And many of us completed this program in UK and brought the program to India. And as you see, all of them are authors of some books. And through those authors, we have built up, kept that body of knowledge. I had the opportunity to be guided by a great mentor, <coughs> Captain Rivari, under the stringent program 993 and completed my extra master's on oil major inspection and wedding, study of non conformances by Indian merchant Navy officers in 996. That research program gave rise to the Indian oil major inspection program, which took off but uh, did not sustain itself because of cultural problems. And there are so many such valuable dissertations lying in the library of LBS Kamsar even today like the first Indian PNI club, where that is uh, oceanography, uh, <clears throat> logistics, and so many others. They're just gathering dust over there, unfortunately. However, since the formation of IMU, the extra masters took a back seat, and IMU did not find uh, it is important, because rightly, their importance was not mariners. Not in, they, they were not interested in developing master mariners, giving them ever new opportunities. So naturally, the uh, master mariners were left stranded, and there was no avenue for development. Uh, the, they migrated into non-maritime fields, which is good, and they've done excellent everywhere. But then the maritime body of knowledge was the loser. Uh, and you can see there's a lot of gaps in our knowledge in uh, marine metrology, in ship stability, in navigation. Uh, they have allowed a corrupt language called local time coming to the exist, uh, which is creating problems. So there's a lot of uh, the loser of the body of knowledge of uh, mariners. The strange region extra master did not find support till the present nautical advisor took over as nautical in 2018 and he worked diligently and passionately with industry bodies and some experts in the academics 
and um, he wanted to revive the extra masters. So he put up the circular one of 2019, uh, the, uh, the nautical circular, and that gave rise to the birth genesis of the new extra masters. It's totally revamped. Uh, you will appreciate that um, the, uh, especially if you're in the government, one of the uh, requirements to be a PO or NA is extra masters. The other option, of course, is a, uh, MSc nautical science or MLMO, but only one person can do it at a time. So the 18 nautical surveys may take 18 years for them to do it. And uh, so one of the drivers of that was to fulfill the needs there. But overall, the drive was much more. If you look at down below, he uh, created a few of experts. I just want to see the last paragraph. The intention of resuming extra masters, as I see it, is to create a team of master trainers who carry this body of knowledge, serve implementation of various IMO instruments and uh, bring it in the national legislation, and lay out a pipeline for effective development and growth of master mariners so they can take up positions as, as NAs, PO, the deputy conservators, CEOs of organizations, directors of ship owning, ship managing company. And that's where our vision is. Prepare navigators for artificial intelligence and machine learning, uh, Internet of Things, autonomous ships, and you'll see two such presentations today. Help the maritime faculty to learn and transfer knowledge. So, there are three parts to extra masters. I'm not going to go through this. Uh, you can see it, but you can see all our faculty there. The leadership management HR led by Kevin Bhai Sharma, Vijay Shankar, Professor Srinivasan, Dr. Samyukta Ajay, Madam Economics by Dr. Anil Menon, who's a professor, Captain Abhay Kumar, who's a, uh, with Maritime Economics and Finance, uh, the Captain Kishore, uh, who's a Chiranjeevi, Maritime Law, Captain Mohan Naik, Captain Desh Pandey, Pankaj Kapoor, then practicing lawyers like Dr. Vivek Jain, Priya Vegetation, the Part B Advanced Navigation by SS Chaudhary, AP Singh, I mean, uh, uh, Ankesh Sinha from yeah, the Cyber Security, Naval Architecture, the Captain Deshpande again, Captain Shingit Giri Gokhale and PMP Singh, uh, Commercial Engineering by Dr. Saxena, P. Gokhale, Mohan Pal Singh, Rajiv Alunka, and the Marine. Environment study. We got the ex director of IMD itself with you. Uh, we got people from SIFNET, uh, Captain AP Singh, and Captain Chaudhary. Uh, ship management by leading all of you know Tony Fernandez, Subhash Desh Pandey, Pai Sharma, and uh, Captain Dr. Uh, Port Management by Suresh Amirapu, again, Captain Pai Sharma, Abe, and uh, Gautam Dev. The research methodology is an optional part of uh, 10 classes, which uh, Dr. Samyukta takes. So you're supposed to complete all the three parts and then you apply for a designation topic, which has to be approved by the DNA. Uh, and uh, so the people who are here, have uh, two of them have completed their, all the exams of extra master, they're waiting for the results. And the third person, uh, the other two are, uh, Kevin Vivek Nathur has done part of his exam. Uh, we take the opportunity to share with you our chief guest, Dr. Malini Shankar will join us around five o'clock and she's put forward an exciting presentation to you about the future, and she calls, I told you, Sanjay Vacha. Right now, I'd like my opportunity to turn uh, the session on to Captain Daniel Joseph. As you know, he is with the DG Shipping and working actively with all our seafarers to bring them home safely, ensure crew change, and while all of us are stuck at working from home, I can promise you, these young guys are really running that office even now. Uh, he's going to share with you how to use DGS website and IMO documents effectively. Uh, Captain Daniel Joseph is a deputy director general technical and presently posted at DG. Uh, his portfolio includes dealing with various key branches in nautical wing and the maritime health safety, navigation safety, ports, radio communication, IV limits. He has additionally uh, been a total officer for the COVID-19 matters and piracy matters, anti-piracy of course, central public information officer, etc. He's, he's completed all parts of the extra master and presently working on a dissertation, blockchain and shipping. Today he's going to share something with you, which is he thought was useful for the maritime industry. So I'm going to uh, hand over the mic now to uh, Captain Daniel Joseph. Can I be given the permission to start my video? He needs permission to start his video. You can start your video. Yes. Uh, you can start your video now, Captain Daniel. Okay.
okay uh good afternoon all uh i will go straight to the topic and i want to share the screen okay okay, okay. first i'll be talking about am i audible sir yes yes okay first i'll be talking through uh, taking you through the imo docs uh, you can just google in imo docs this is a link as soon as you click this this will open up and as a public user you can register here and uh, with your email details and uh, contact details you can forward it to imo imo will re verify that the person is not a spam and it will revert back with your user id cred credentials i have got uh, mine as a member state uh, because i be belong to the administration this is my user id i log in and uh, before i talk i would uh, play a small video uh, which will take you through the imo docs imo website can be accessed the imo website can be accessed via www.imo.org as seen here If you scroll down to the bottom, click on the IMO web accounts to proceed to the next page. On this page, you will need to log in using your credentials, after which you will proceed to the IMO docs by clicking here. Templates of IMO documents are available in the three working languages on their IMO docs homepage. By clicking on the red link, you will be able to download a sample IMO document in Word. You can access meeting documents by clicking here. For this demonstration we will access the documents of the previous MEPC session. If you click here, you can sort the documents by their symbol. Whereas on the right side you can sort them by the date they were added. Here you have the option to choose between the six languages, and just above it you can choose the session number. On the top left hand side is a separate tab for J papers, working papers and meeting audio. Now we will go back to the main home screen of the IMO docs. If you would like to be notified when new documents are published, you can subscribe yourself to the RSS feeds. On this page you can choose which areas of interest you would like to be notified about. If we go back to the main home page of the IMO docs, we will show you another way to keep informed. If you select document notifications, you will be taken to a different screen. Here you can adjust the frequency of notifications and select the categories of documents you want to be notified about. So any contacts, any queries can be sent to documents at imo.org.
so that was the short three minute presentation uh, i will just run through the other things these are the meetings which the upcoming meeting details are uh, posted if you can see all these are postponed due to the effect of covid 19 and the announcements are made here this is the menu where because i know has a cafeteria and uh, the daily menu which is available it is posted there and you have internet access how to access the internet there and these are the other additional information for the delegation delegates who are going there uh, i will go through the meeting documents these are the assembly documents these these are the committees file committees legal mepc msc technical cooperation and these are the conferences these are the council documents sub committees like very critical ones cargo the human element and training and watch keeping this is triple i imo sub committee on implementation of uh, imo instruments formerly it was flag state inspection then ncsr uh, which i recently attended ppr also last ppr sub committee i attended ship uh, design and uh, uh, construction these are uh, uh, mainly with uh, naval arc so naval architecture are normally attending this these are related to ship safe systems and equipment i can just uh, run through one of the document so that uh, you will get a hang of it like how to uh, see those as uh, it was briefed this is the last session 102 and if you want to see the uh, report See, there are one fifty-five documents, and the various presentation made by the countries. If you can see, these are the countries which have put up the paper, and it came for discussion in the IMO. These are the related documents, like. Uh, we can see related to lrit see these are the normally first it starts with the agenda provisional agenda and then what all things are discussed those papers are put up here you can hear the audio also so that's it uh, regarding imo so i request and suggest every extra master applicant to kindly register with imo docs and uh, go through the same it is continuous uh, learning and uh, listening process here you can see every day something or the other is being added my next topic for the day let me log out Uh, next uh, topic for the day is running through the dg shipping website i am sure everybody would have gone through this website many times but i will from the administrative uh, uh, side i will try to explain few things which i have experienced in last few years with the directorate normally the stakeholders are not aware like which wing or which department looks after what as you know the directorate is a ocean there are so many cases uh, which the directorate receives every day so if the client or the stakeholders doesn't approach the concerned correct branch by the time it reaches to the branch you will lose valuable time so for the processing of the cases it is advised that the request or the 
query which you are raising should be raised to the current correct way so for that i will uh, guide you through some of the slides which will benefit you let me go through one of the order this is the very key order of 2013 16 of 2013 dated 28 6 2013 the technical branches of the directorate have been delegated with the branches and the branches have been delegated through this order dg shipping order number 16 of 2013 if you can see what does the branches do so we start with nautical wing suppose you have a query regarding registration of your ships you have a problem where the ship has to be registered how it has to be registered and you have some technical issues so the correct department correct wing is nautical wing nt wing earlier it was nautical and training so that's why the word is now the training has been separated and it is a separate branch but earlier it was nautical and training so that's why the name stands nt so if you see registration of ships and the reference of ms act is given or relevant convention is given so ms act 22 so you can see registration examination matter related marine casualties are handled by nautical branch life saving manning of nautical officers cargo related matters i look after this carriage of imsbc and other related matters registration of ship of of ships is also my branch then uh, search and rescue isps lrt dg com center synopsis record wreck and salvage call rack safety of navigation gmds is radio communication i look after this matter related to this i look after this port entry rules hsc code i look after fall i look after and matter related to clc llms c hns clc and fund hnsc i look after and then sua convention oprc i look after then there are matter this is csc then there are matter related to engineering so if you see any matter related to ism and other things are taken ism surveys and engineering matters are uh, done by engineering especially dry docking statutory certificates psc ism firefighting even firefighting lsa is taken care by nautical firefighting is taken care by engineering and if you see uh, ship repairs mar pole mar pole operational aspects as per oprc is with nautical if you see but the main part convention and related items is with uh, engineering afs ballast water then you can see naval lock what are they they are, they mainly deal with the stability matters dry docking load line tank coatings measurements and sub division and crew accommodations rsvs sps code and other condition assessment scheme cas related to and this these main things are elaborated in the coming section upcoming section you can see these is elaborated so this is one of the uh, key order which people should know where it is then i will run through the uh, website this is where home is the this is the home site then you can see like now you have identify which wing is what which wing is doing now you have a issue especially now during this covid time it is all done through emails and soft copies so no need to submit any hard copies so now you should know exactly which is which wing is looking after you obviously don't know which officer is looking after but at least you know which wing is looking so you can address it to the wing if it is related to nautical you can address to, to the head if it is engineering you can head, address it to the head and if it is naval arc you can address to them so this is contact us then you have uh, merchant shipping acts all acts are related acts are here and if you can see shipping notices these are the orders circulars ms notice of 
if you can see main issues will be related to the seafarers if you see seafarers are worried about mostly related to exams mm. so these all are under stcw so you go to tg shipping circulars and it will show them extra masters yeah, uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to. so if you see it is all here so this is one of the important thing which you should uh, read this one training and assessment program this gives detailed about parte parte gives details about the assessment and examination part if you see it is a very dynamic di document it keeps we keep uh, amending it so it gives full details about the assessment and there is one more which is a t part b training and assessment this gives the uh details about the course which program is uh, how many do what what is the syllabus how it is prepared it details about the courses these are the courses so if you can see detail there are 1000 pages so training institutes are aware of this and they go through this and if you can see uh related to uh Dollar mm -hmm. water. These are related to STCW, and I will go through. In T circle. Ah, uh, examination because not in STCW, no. So you can go through this examination, and if you can see, this is the one of two thousand nineteen. So examination related to syllabus and guidelines, assessment, everything is given in this circular. You can go through this, and all nautical related are examination matters, other relevance. Any queries are there? It it is attended through a circular on this matter. So this is related to you can browse through. There are so many other branches: LRT, cargo safety, ballast water, safe manning. when there is nt engineering when there is a combined it is applicable for both then it is issued like coe like coc correction pages so it is applicable for both so it will come as a this was issued by me only this then it is for both so these are the circulars these are the indoors training related guidelines circulars you can see all these are marked here training circulars and of late we have added a new covid dashboard which i am monitoring we have regarding all crew changes all guidelines have been put here then there is a feedback menu if you are not finding anything and you are not getting any query so you can straight away put a feedback here the topic whichever you have a problem or enquiry you can type and send and within 24 hours it is 24 cross 7 monitored so there is a whatsapp group also for this help desk with the dgs so we keep tracking this and immediately it is attended and resolved and there is also a help desk there are common which are issues which are there now coming to one more very important thing which i would like to share is related to Uh, maritime health uh, there are lot of issues with uh, if you are not aware like who is the doctor which is the doctor approved so it is given here all the details because this branch i look after them. so all the details are provided which all the circulars are effective and which are the uh, doctors who are approved so you can see there are so many doctors if you see in in your place you want to know which is the doctor dg approved doctor so you can refer to this guideline this it is approved list and it is updated every week then one more important thing i want to show is standard operating procedures sops uh, see these are the procedures which are for mmds and for engineering suppose you want to apply to nautical for some uh, some technical or some tower foul weather permissions so it is given here you have to just fill up this form pay the fees and give it to the concerned 
branch. So these are the checklists which are put up here for shipping development, casualty, training branch. So all the SOPs are here. And this has been continuously reviewed. If there are any changes, then we incorporate here. Then one more thing I want to show is regarding FAQs. Please refer to these FAQs for nautical engineering and these are updated and all the frequently asked questions are posted here. The other RPS vacancy, these are the other updated list which you can find other agencies. Uh, shipping notices I have covered. Then registrations of ships data are given. Seafarers, maritime training. So you can go through the approved training institutes. If you want to see which are the approved training institutes, you can just type here. Got out five minutes. Yeah, you can check and find. So that is one thing. Then there is a e governance. For CFRS profile, you can go through this, click this and get registered and use this. Then there is e-learning, which has started now and exit exam. I think I've completed almost everything. And it would be helpful for the stakeholders who are using the same. I'm open up for any questions now. So. Okay. Captain Daniel Joseph will be leaving us uh, shortly. If any question is there right now, uh, one question relevant, which maybe you can help answer. Uh, I've got two questions in the one is why India does not have a dedicated accident for marine accident investigation. Would you like to take that or why India did not have a dedicated agency for marine accident investigation? We have a dedicated cell. It has been monitored 24 plus 7. There is a uh, there are uh, one there is a proper uh, hierarchy which is being monitored, and there is a dedicated agency which is the looking. The question after is from Anirudh Kumar. You want to clarify that uh, what exactly can it be made independent? Is what uh... independent? But if you see as per the Act, MS Act. If you see in the MS Act, it is given. The guidelines are given. The requirement is given. So there was a move uh, sometime back to make an independent or uh, one of our ex uh, nautical advisors. Captain Katri was in charge of that, who is now any of the thing. But then that was uh, something happened, got scuttled. But there is a, uh, if you see, as per the Act, uh, we are complying with the Act requirement, and there is a dedicated uh, in charge, Captain Santos Darukar, Deputy Nautical Advisor. The, uh, in charge of the cell, casualty cell, and there is uh, under him Captain Mohit Bell is there, and the 24 cross 7 DGCOM center is there. Okay, thank you. So, right now, I know the question, but I just want to share uh, to thank you so much, Captain Daniel Joseph. You know, just to tell the participants here, if please, if you're looking at the IMO document, look at the agendas, agenda for the next meeting and contribute. If you missed out, morning there was a session uh, by another organization, and uh, the minister. And uh, DG, you're there. And uh, there's a move now to introduce yoga and uh, mental health of seafarers into the system. So if you want to contribute, uh, how that would come in is, uh, the uh, first is India has to prove it's doing it on its own. Uh, in the national way, we are practicing these practices. Then we make a paper and go to IMO and tell the IMO that this is what is needed for our seafarers. So this is where you can all uh, contribute. Uh, and you can see... Any papers you want to give on, please do. The paper can be made. Paper. I have shown where the paper is. People can present the paper to us. It can be vetted and submitted in IMO. Yeah, it can be present in IMO. So, uh, so the international, uh, the people here represent the international IMO. There are the national body and you, uh, your contribution is most, most welcome. You can see the whole transformation taking place. I think this is the first ever time somebody has taken the effort to explain uh, DG website <laughs> and and the um, my I've got a question to you. How does one keep a track of the DG website? It should be a daily practice to open the website and yes, daily practice. I go through morning. My first routine is I go through the website, see through the news. 
section and then go, whichever it is whether it is related to your branch or not uh, whether it is administration or general matter just for enhancing the knowledge i read through the so this is a new practice we encourage everybody to do go through the website in the morning see something like you brush your teeth you need to now start <laughs> uh looking at the dg website if you are so weekly ones brand. weekly ones i am i am a docs okay. so thank you very much sir thank you for your time i know you are busy man you just come out for a meeting and i am going to another one if you can join us back uh, we'd really appreciate it uh, yes yes i will i will keep hopping in thank you very much yeah. sir namaste so namaste. thank you thank you very much so we give a big hand uh, for your contribution uh, so our next uh, Our next speaker is going to be Vivek Rathod, another busy man on board a ship. Not that the others are not busy. T. Anil Kumar raised a hand. Anil, you have anything to share? Or let me just open my presentation once more. Okay. So can we uh, bring Captain Vivek Rathod onto the screen, please? So we just had Daniel Joseph sharing some aspects of the DG website and IMO website, and every person can become a member of it. That you don't have access to all the documents. You should have uh, your own password and uh, enter the documents. There are uh, you can go and contribute to that. Uh, contribution should go through DG Shipping because finally they represent India and the IMO, and uh, that's where we are. Okay. So our next presentation is by Kevin Vivek Rathod. Uh, we, all of all the four present the person presenting are from a pioneering extra masters batch which started in March. Uh, so Vivek Rathod, Rajesh Nambiar, uh, Daniel, and uh, Venkat Shivaram Krishna. Okay. So Vivek has completed the exam as his party, and he has joined the prestigious uh, MTI Kauai in the year 2000. Uh, my screen is getting blocked there. He he wanted to acknowledge his school, but I don't have that in here. I'll allow him to acknowledge that after. He's been a keen sportsman, uh, lots of gold medals. So India is not going to be short of gold and a silver medal. Uh, Lucky you sail, get uh, uh, ship, shipping competition of Vishwakarma. Fourteen months, and he's been a CI for six years. Second officer with there after Bernard Shulte, and now presently of fleet management. He's right now talking us. He's right now talking to you from China. He's the additional master on board. Uh, he's worked on both dry and wet segments, including general cargo, handy max, panamax, country of DNS from Bits Pilani, BS in nautical science, Mumbai University, and pursuing a dual MBA. He has cleared our part A, and he's not been able to appear for the other parts. Uh, so because of his sailing. And he's waiting to come home. So Vivek, the floor is yours. Thank you, sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, today I take uh, so I will starting using an absolute honor as a part of this seminar to address you all for the issues in shipping. Uh, good evening, everyone. The chair. Mrs. Mali, Dr. Jay Shankar, Captain Ajay Sutan Sir, Mr. Amit Rathi, my all the participants, and all the colleagues from Extra Masters course. Good evening, gentlemen. Today, today we'll be for 20 minutes looking on the topic uh, artificial intelligence in shipping. So it will be a privilege to on this platform to put forth my views on the application of artificial shipping. As a short prelude to my presentation, I shall be analyzing the various challenges. Faced by merchant navy in the terms of paperwork required to be done, the manpower management, as well as the plethora of technical issues plaguing sailors from time to time, I shall be throwing some light upon the world of artificial intelligence and the breakthroughs made thus far. How can we leverage them to overcome the challenges mentioned above? So I shall be now sharing my PPT. <coughs> Thank you. 
I hope all of you can see my PPT. So today's topic will be seamless ship onboarding, how AI will transform the experience. So the main issue is, is uh, with the seamen and uh, all the offices. So what is actually the AI and uh, what is all about? So AI is the artificial intelligence, which is we'll be talking about in the next 20 minutes. And the problems we are on board using the paperwork compliance, and we are taking one scenario of a vessel in the dry dock, and the solutions we can leverage from AI to transform the experience. So there will be a few things uh, for the basic knowledge for all the participants and the viewers that what is the deep learning, what is artificial intelligence, what is machine learning, so that uh, you have an idea what we are talking about. So basically, a deep learning is a subset of machine learning where we, we you have an algorithm and a set forms of uh, things which will, in a software, we perform some actions of speech and image recognition and exposing the multi-layered neutral works which will give us the, the exposed data in the last. While the machine learning is a subset of AI which includes the deep learning process and it has the self-enhancing self-enhancing module and it learns on its own with the previous experiences and the artificial intelligence which includes the machine learning and also the deep learning is how we use technology improves our logics decision making and other issues in learning so now we will look we will be looking on that how we can use the modern ai techniques in the shipping world and also the relevant to the commercial world all around us how it has been so we have got few of few of the things listed autonomous ships the weather and economic predictions the delivery dispatch process the autopilot for the ships for the route planning the medical diagnosis of covid 19 solving complex material theorems playing strategic games like you know chess or go you must be remembering the famous uh, supercomputer who was defeated, uh, Visharat Anand and Gary Kasparov in 97. Also, we have got verb search engines, which using the word upon AI. Special recognitions for security surveillance at the airports, at the visa centers, immigration centers. So we are taking a scenario where on board a vessel, the vessel is busy in different operations. It's not in control of the ship staff, how to control everything while the compliance of the regulations has to be there. So we're looking one by one all the things. So first, we have got onboard operations, the vessel is in the dry dock, lots of issues are there, all the work on the anchors, the hatch covers, the ballast tanks, the main engine, the generators, and also outside sandblasting and uh, painting, lots of issues are going on together at the same maintenance time. So ballast tanks, cargo holds, maintenance are there. While the second thing is the so connect shore interaction, we have got the class surveys, the renewal surveys uh, going on, the dry dock repair works, we have got about 100 guys working on board the vessel, the technicians for the WIS, for the ICCP, main engine, and et cetera, et cetera. We have got also got a bunkering at the same time, chip chandlers with the stores. So a lot of shore interaction is there on board the tank. Also, at the same time, we are required to comply with the regulations that are ISM, MLC, STCW, SOLAS, ISPS, other portrait complete uh, requirements, company requirements, and also uh, regulatory requirements which are required there. And last is the record keeping. This is the most important part which we will be looking at how to solve the situation. The record keeping, we are required to keep our uh, documentation in ours, rest, rest our compliance. The company's permit to work system, risk assessment, the meetings required for daily work, the toolbox meetings, safety meetings, and management meetings. So at the same time, we have to comply with all the relevant regulations of the flex state or the post state company procedures. While doing the onboard operations in a dry dock, it is a hectic schedule. And we have got a lot of show interference 
you can say sorry the better word will be interaction and we also comply with the record keeping part of it so next slide will be we have a master a master is in cabin he is busy with the class surveyor doing the documentation for the renewal surveys and the chief officer he is busy in the cargo holds upgradation the sand blasting and the painting coating uh, conditions they are doing sa1 sa2 and to check the coating conditions for the chief engineer is busy with the main engine technicians and there were some issues and they are solving in the main engine in the room while second engineer he has some leakages in the ballast line he attended to it so the scenario is we have got one one operation like we take it for example working a lot operation has to be done for as per company procedures we are required to have a management meeting and after that a risk assessment has to be prepared and we should have a permit to work system that is working a lot system permit has to be issued to the duty officer and then the work has to resume so for all the for all the job all the four officers are required to meet together for the, for the management meeting but if they are leaving their physical works physical positions the work will be suffering like the class surveyor or the hold operation manager maintenance so how to do this because if they do it they the job which we are they do actually already doing it will be getting postponed or the other issue will be if they don't do it and they make it on the paper it doesn't solve the purpose altogether we are failing in the purpose altogether so that is how we have to record because as per ism code 2010 we are required to comply with the regulations and the permit to work system this permit has to be there so this is the most important code as per which the documentation on board has to be maintained you can see that there was ship board management reviews risk assessment nmcs and msc but all those things are there so for this you can see on your screen that how can we slowly and easily uh having leveraging of ai to transform the onboarding experience and making this paperless and more easier for us using the relevant technology in place now so we got the the few things so we after a full days work we are here to have the work to be done the checklist to be done complete the paperwork and lots of paperwork is there while we are already doing the things it also takes us extra work to comply with the relevant checklist and regulations so we have to comply this scenario we have to comply with the relevant regulations but we try to do a, a, a meeting which has to be done so that the purpose is solved while the paperwork has to the burden has to be reduced so for all those things what our answer is the artificial intelligence that is what we are going to talk about in next 5 10 minutes the artificial intelligence using of that will be solving our problem so my idea is to have a pdas pda will be a personal digital assistant which shall be helping us with the on the go company's permit system like personal tabs with everybody on board 22 people on board is the master chief engineer chief officer second engineer and other officers and crew as required which will be having the digital formats of the company the risk assessments the permit to work system so this in the scenario the all the four officers they are in their position so they need to have meeting so they can do that meeting in the chat and what all the risk assessments are there because the all the things hazards involved the consequences the solutions and safety precautions to comply with they all can have a lockdown which is using the stylus in the, their personal tabs in all the in the personal uh, capacities being continuing their work at the same time so they don't need to leave their patients or physical positions so they have it will be it will be a, a meeting which will lock down and can be saved upon so that is where the personal tabs come in we are doing the job same job compliance of the procedures solving the procedures and doing it so once the risk assessment has been done by the all the four officers the following safety precautions will be complied with and inform the duty officer duty engineer to do that job and then the duty officer will be instructed to comply with and then he will go in the position like the forward mast to ensure that the boatswain is wearing the safety harness and the required working ground permit has to be issued the person will be climbing up the ladder they have a proper staging 
or proper safety net rigged. The engine room will be informed that there should be no horns to be used and tag in, tag out, and all those procedures. Nobody to blow the whistle by mistake. So here, the duty officer will be carrying out the checks and he'll be issuing the permit, while the boson will himself be carrying with the team leader shall be wearing the proper PP as required by the company. So all the people are doing the checks, but not meeting in, in person and complying in their personal types and saving in and to be for the perusal of the senior officer. It is how, how I do about this. So we are excluding the paperwork, complying at the same time, but not compromising with the safety of the operation. So that is where we, we get the paperwork into the system, which has to be digital system. So digital uh, is the future where we are looking from paperwork to the more digital operations. Like we are all on board, we are on board ashore, we are all used to this formats of Excel, the images, the PDF files, text, Word, other files. So all these things which we are already using, which we are using the annotation tool, these documents can be controlled in a controlled database and these files can be well documented and having some features which we'll be talking in sub subsequent slides can be used so that our operations are seamless well documented and not first on board and the procedures compliance of all the things are carried out so we are carrying out all the day work like about 10 12 hours you are working 16 hours working sometimes in the ports in the dry dock and after that, we have to comply with the permits if somebody is coming for inspections, the portrait control, the flag state, the class surveyors, or the right shape betting, so etc. etc. So we have to keep documentation in control. So after doing the whole work, we also need a one or two hours, couple of hours daily to comply with the paperwork. So it takes an additional load altogether. People are then, uh, what to say, people are then uh, have to. Uh, make some shortcuts or compromise with the procedures. So this is all the thing all about. So, but the value well going to digital, it also has to, we have to look on the concerns related to, because with the internet, there are lots of issues also pop in. So we have got some incidents in the recent past, you can load up in the MERSC, in the MSC, in the shore offices, with the Bangladesh, there have been some uh, recent attacks, and we're talking about a few other attacks. So we've got a phishing attacks, we've got a malware attacks, the worm, the Trojan, the spyware, the ransomware. There are some also have the issues regarding data leaks, hacking, insider threats, the cloud security issues, the data backup, whatever we are doing things, all the data is on board, is collected, it is not uh, properly documented, or it is leaked. You, the PDS issued to all the people, they are not using properly, the personal using, playing games or use of USBs, electric hazard, the safety issues with elect any electronic items. So there are a few concerns which come up when we go digital. So we have to be addressing them in the, in the, in the next few slides. While in the shipping applications, you can see a, a digital and paperless ship will be a more seamless vessel and easy for documentation and uh, for any of the compliance. So, and in in the end, subsequent, it will be helping us, everybody in the digital and efficient shipping. We are on the go, you have all the record keeping and people are not, not fudging. So, you know already the first vessel, which is fully automated, autonomous vessel, Motor Vessel Yara Land is already in operation in close where, uh, northwest of Europe, so in Norway, Baltic Sea. And it's a container vessel about 120 TUs, which has been already in operation. So the future of the shipping will be autonomous vessels coming in you know, subsequent years of five to 10 years. So India has to come up and uh, we have to start planning ahead of the issues where there's no person on board is there, there's no bridge watch keepers, then amendment of the ROR has to be done, how to make up, how to make up the issues, documentations, for keeping the operation safe, moving the cargoes, transporting safely and in the keeping the oceans cleaner. So using the PDS uh, will be greatly enhancing where manual interventions will be avoided and the things can be documented on their own. The precision accuracy and the speed and overall efficiency of the operations will be improving. Like a duty officer while he taking the taking over the watch shall be 
just uh, monitoring the temperature, the heading, uh, the weather conditions, and the things will get locked down on its own. Or you can just come collect in the PDA, and all those items will be collected in the lock keeping. So we don't need to uh, make an entry after four hours, which is just a paper, paper action. While doing the checks, he can make the entries in the PDAs, and this will be record keeping for the weather data, navigation data, all those things. At the same time, the equipment has to be intrinsically safe devices, which has to be at least T4 type, where the current, the power, the voltage is so low that any incident will not be happening with the equipment. So the category of IS is very important, should be at least T, at least of T4 type, which is less than power of 1.3 watts, so that it will not sustain a fire or anything until temperature of 135 degrees Celsius is there. So it will be safe for usage in a normal condition, like of any smoke or dust, it will be a safe operation that we have to ensure. People will not be fudging the records, like in the third of, uh, it comes in the morning, morning 8 o'clock, if we have a system of biometrics in the PDA, so he logs in when he, he comes to the watch, and, and at 12 o'clock when the watch is over, he hands over and to a second officer and logs out. So at the same time, the operation is being recorded and the biometrics can ensure that person was working that time and the automatic compliance of the rest hours will be there. So we don't need to sit after the day's work or after a week to uh, maintain the rest hours uh, when the people can play around showing non-conformities, no, no, better not to report to the flag state and people are uh, making the shortcuts. So what we do, get the recording automatically in the devices which can be used online tracking so that people will not be fudging on board and ashore also, making the thing transparent altogether. So they want to be affected by hostile environment. So using the relevant technology from IT, we have to be seeing what are the safety features we can incorporate, making it internet or making intranet or all those things, because you know, the phishing and all the attacks, then somewhere all these similar attacks have to be taken care. So with the relevant industry practices, which will be in place, at this time, or maybe a couple of years in future, they have to be continuously guarded so that our system is not compromised altogether. This will be in practice, will be saving enormous amount of savings in papers, printers, cartridges, and also make, making some economic sense. Like it will, has to be a viable option to have a PDA, then to operate in the papers and all those things. It has to be viable, feasible and sustainable, only then only it can be used in future. And this all will be helping us, our, our mother for a clean planet again, and we have to contribute for the future of our uh, generations. So I will like to, uh, that, that's all for my slide. In the end, I will like to thank the Captain Ajay Dutan, our mentor and managing director of the solutions. He also our faculty, uh, Dr. Samita Ajay, she is, uh, teaching us in the research methodology and guidance for the slides and some is after for thesis after this for the research. Captain Shodhan Sharma sir, he is a faculty in extra masters. Mr. Angesh Sharma, Captain Vijay Rathor, Captain Ivan Yusin Rathor, and my dearest friend, uh, Chief Engineer Mr. Arjun Singh Chima, who has been helping me for the automation and industrial updates all through the operation uh, because I'm too new to it, but artificial intelligence is a totally new subject which we have to concur to sustain Indian shipping in the coming years. And we have to take lead in the autonomous vessels so that India doesn't lag down. So there are a few sites where I have been taking reference for the PPT and doing my research, National, National Maritime Foundation and uh, IMA.org, TTS, Pacific Green Technologies, supportchain.com. Any of the question answers uh, shall be addressed now. Thank you, sir. Uh, so we'll take the question answers a bit later, we think. You can you have some time, right? So I just that um, uh, address the issue, uh, his uh, presentation and then with Raj, along with Rajesh Nambiar, I will uh, have the question paper answers for you together. Okay. So uh, thank you, sir. there are a few questions which have come in. But you have a look at the chat and uh, thank you so thank much. You. So give thank you, sir. Thank you. Hand, okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I'm ending the share. Keep it, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Can you stop sharing screen? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir.
so uh, so that was about uh, the artificial intelligence and he's working on that to ensure that the pda so there are questions on pda please have a look at it uh, we know there's some one person who's asked a question anonymously i don't think that's very good it's a very good question but i don't know why you're anonymous i really appreciate if you put your name because uh, for me my best students were the ones who asked questions you know so i don't want you to be a bad student uh, so please do uh, let us name we'll ask you a question anyway uh, so our next session is another we want to have a mixed session i'll show you the calendar xmr has have um, so this gentleman uh, is uh, one of the oldest uh, extra masters candidate students and uh, he happens to be also my batchmate so we joined together in ujjayi brother in 1975 he got his command in 85 and um, sailed on various bulk uh, bulkers presently is amet as a principal of the amet city college and an examiner for the masters and mates for the mmd and the board of examination of seafarers So I introduce you, Captain Venkat Shivam Krishna. He bought something off beat. Uh, he developed some wonderful skills in Excel, and uh, with a lot of effort, he has tried to make it a simple presentation for you. And uh, the floor is yours, uh, Venkat. Can we have Captain Venkat Shivam Krishna? Venkat, are you there? I'm there. I'm there. Yeah. You can try sharing your video, sir. Okay, one. Honest while it does not come. Can you? Okay. Ah, uh, good morning to all of you. Ah, uh, I'll try to be go to the presentation because it might take little time for us. So we can't see you. There's just a word "see" you over there. You know. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> Okay. Can you just lower your thing over to can only see from chin up? Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, I'll just go on to the slides. Uh, respected uh, Dr. Manni Shankar, she is here to come now. Uh, I S J person, National Merit Board. Director General of Shipping, Captain Ajay Chutan. Extra master faculty, distinguished speakers, extra master candidates, and others present in this webinar. Good evening. Captain Subramaniam is there, especially. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My special regards to him. As I didn't notice it, Captain. So special regards to Captain H Subramaniam. I was this student for nearly for all the grades. Second mates, mates, and masters. Uh, good evening, and good evening to all. Uh, we are going to do the Excel program, lit, small little Excel program. I don't say it's a big one. It's only using of the function. Uh, the scope is to familiarize with few functions out of several hundreds of functions which Excel offers. And the limitation is, of course, though. Work with me option is best suited for the, the learning the Excel functions. I will attempt to give you an experience as close to that as possible. Now, why should we learn the Excel functions? Depending on your requirement and budget, you would have either purchase the software from the market generic, pay for customized software, definitely quite a high cost. or developed an in-house software team i mean uh, uh, develop software by an in-house team in spite of all that there will be situations when small excel functions and other applications especially coupled with the google forms will be very useful and which can save lot of your and your boss and your subordinates time but also it reduces the errors now another reason which i mentioned is it is as easy as making a cup of tea and one more reason covid because you are having lot of time and you are most of the times you are with the computers and you have time to learn 
uh, the excels now now where effective use where are you can use this uh, excel programs at c you can do it for the port papers um, more or less you know the people who are selling now or in the last 20 years uh, we know that uh, almost uh, two ports means one ream 500 sheet goes in two or three ports so nearly uh, on an average i have uh, calculated about 150 papers we take a print out so there you can use the excel to reduce the time inventory and intent medical locker inventory provision inventory cargo calculations on a personal side you can have your income tax calculations personal investments and those who are assured in especially in mtis either you are a superintendent or a faculty in a maritime training institute um you can have it a student and faculty eligibility criteria because uh, most of the dg regulations requires seven or eight conditions to be met for a faculty i know that for a chemical tanker faculty we need uh, six criteria to be met so then the other one is faculty and staff remuneration or you may be interested in conducting a marathon right from invitation list to t-shirt size to price distribution and uh, management of the cost you can do it on excel here i have chosen only one part of the cargo calculation even in that cargo calculations choosing calculate involving hydrostatic particulars that is what i have chosen here and that also is too big for uh, this 20 minutes time so i have taken very small task that is for a given draft uh finding hydrostatic particulars and for a given displacement finding hydro uh, static particulars that means for a draft either you give a draft or displacement you should be able to find the particulars with the excel and the inter as interpolation consumes time we will reduce we will use the excel to do the monotonous job and obtain the results quickly as some of the functions are best learnt in excel will be switching back and forth between the powerpoint presentation and excel of course with the associated delays i try to minimize it um please bear with me and hydrostatic particulars will be screened several times uh, that mp hinship hydrostatic particulars will be screened several times but each time for a different purpose uh this screen is we are all very familiar with this screen same draft to kml and 3 meters to 10 meters and my presentation or my you can say mini workshop type of thing what we are going to do is given an intermediate draft finding out the other particulars that is on the third line and uh, in the bottom given the displacement finding out the other particulars just like we would like to see the photos of our holiday destination whether we are going to taj mahal or uh, rajasthan or somewhere we would like to when before we go for the first time we would like to see the uh, see those photographs in the same way before we learn the functions we'll click we'll quickly go there to the excel and see like a what how we are going to use that functions i'll just uh, change or i'll just stop sharing the screen and uh, come back on the excel please bear with for few seconds okay now we, we are in excel i hope all of you can see the excel part of it there are hydrostatic particulars in excel what we will be doing is i will give a this the same hinge particulars nothing new uh, by the way i would like to show the hydro, i want to see the screen and just small little function which most of you will be knowing it that the split screen i'll be using that one in case somebody would like to have a look at it here you can have four different uh, windows you can see free space will give you only two now i'm i'm shifting this one down and for the draft you can see the hydrostatic particulars here
and I have taken a draft of 9.15 meters and all that I have to do, I'll just shift the for a 9.15, I request all of you to watch this Excel line number 21. Now from 9.15, I just make it to 9.20 or something. All the particulars are changing here. In the same way, I'm going to the next one that is given a displacement. We all know how much time we took and the students take in order to get these figures. So now I'm putting about 17,000 tons as a displacement. All the data in line number 21 comes quite quickly. Now with the displacement, I will, now we'll go back to the PowerPoint presentation. Again, I'm going, I'm stopping the sharing of the screen. Now, in order to do that calculation, just by giving a draft and the, or the displacement and getting the other things, uh, it is good to know few items here, few of the functions or uh, comment box, round up and round down function. And uh, we need to know what is the purpose of inserting dollar in a cell reference. Split screen we have shown you already. Then we look up and commonly used formula. Though due to paucity of time, I will not be covering. I request, uh, I advise all of you to learn if Usage of the paste link, goal seek, count if, count ifs, sum if, and sum ifs. They are very, very useful. Now, the comment box is most of you have used that comment box. You can insert, edit, or show, hide the comments. I will do everything practically and uh, round up and round down will give you the number of the required number of the value will change. Now we will see how the value will change and how I am using the round round down function in order to get uh, the intermediate value in the hydrostatic tables. Uh, split screen, fine. Purpose of inserting is to lock the cell. Please remember that as it is to lock the cell. I will do it with a practical demonstration. And we look up. We look up and just look up also is there. V look up is there. H look up is there. Here we are using only vertical look up. H for horizontal and V for vertical. Now again, we will go back to the Excel part of it. Now comments. Let me say you have done all the is my screen visible? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, say you have done some calculations in an office. I'm going to the shore based organization or even a ship based also. Um, you have done the calculations and you got amount to be drawn from the bank is 5 lakh rupees. Now you want to put a comment. You can insert all that you have to do. Just right click and you can have an insert comment. Because comment is already there, I am having the option of edit comment. Now, I will just say, okay, there is no 5,000 rupees notes. Anyway, no denomination less than 5,000 or something. You can change it. And uh, I am not going to go for delete comment is easy. Now, what is the show comment? The moment I move the cursor from that uh, cell, from this cell, the comment disappears. Now. I want my... You to stop sharing this and share Excel. You to stop sharing the screen. Go and okay. open the Excel now. It is an Excel. Okay. Now? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll just repeat the last two or three sentences. Uh, delete comment is easy. Edit. Insert is fine. Now, the show and hide comments, that is the toggle switch. The same button you press it once it comes as show. Now, I want this particular comment to be visible or pasted on the screen. 
So what I'll be doing, right click, go on to the cell, right click and show or hide the button. Now, where are, even when I'm working somewhere, when I'm saving it, this particular comment will be uh, uh, visible on the display for the other user to note it. So with that, I'll stop. Now we'll go on to the next one, round up and round down. This is a function, the syntax, Syntax is nothing but a computer uh, grammar. We call it as a syntax. Uh, for the as strict as in English, uh, English grammar, computer also will require the spaces and the comma that most of you will be knowing it. So round up number and number of digits. Now, let us say hydrostatic draft is 7.6441. Um, okay, I have gone to four decimals. Now, when I use a round up function, that value is in E5, cell E5, and when I put 0, it, it gives me a value of 8. Same thing with 1, 7.7, .7, and it keeps reducing or it keeps changing with the second digit, that is 1, 2, 3, the number of digits which I am asking. So I will show you how we can use this one in the hydrostatic tables. Now, round down function. That is round up and this is round down for the same 7.6441. Round down with zero, it gives seven. Uh, uh, I request all of you to note the hydrostatic draft which I have given is same 7.6441. With the round up, it is showing eight. With the round down, it is showing seven. So now most of the, all of us, including nautical side and the engineering side, we have used the hydrostatic tables. Now you know for to get the uh, one line I'll use the round down and for the second line I'll get a round up. Okay, now I believe that this is enough. Uh, sp split screen already explained, so I will not go by it. Um, now, why to use dollar when referring a cell? Uh, many people get, get confused. Now we just said, let us come back to a short establishment. Uh, employee A, B, C, D, they have so and so in the basic wages. And I will uh, work with you so that uh, I'll delete all this so that uh, it comes easy for you. Okay, now I have to get 40% of 50,000 that as an overtime. So what I'll be doing is equal to, I, I select the cell, give a multiplication sign and 40. This part is fine, 20,000 rupees. Now, when I drag it, I get some figures, but these figures are wrong. What it is doing, instead of taking 50,000 as a basic, the HRA is calculated 25% of 20,000. OSA is calculated overseas allowance. Okay, uh, not for the show people, just a OSA into the allowance. 20% uh, of 5,000 it is calculating and tanker allowance, 40% of 1,000 rupees it is calculating. So all figures are wrong, but it appears they are all right. So to avoid this one, I have to tell the computer, just like a uh, Banega Kroorpati E4 Pachad ka Lav Kaya Jai So what I will do is here now E4 I put dollar sign before 4 and I will explain it later on ok for the timing I will do only E4 and E4 has been locked when I drag it I will get a different figures and these are the correct figures and his salary is like that. Now fine, I got one employee figures right. All that I, I have introduced a dollar. Now, when I take it to horizontally, some fancy figures are coming. Something like a 13 digit number and 14 digit numbers are coming. Again, it is wrong. What is happening is for this cell, for empl employee A, we got it right, no doubt. For employee B in cell F5, it is taking 40% that for 35,000, it is taking 20,000 percent of 35,000. That is why I said it is showing all the 13,000, 13 digits and 14 digits. Again, I'm going to introduce a dollar to dollar D has to be locked here. Now, all the time doing just before D, I'm putting a dollar and 
I am correcting in my first place, first person employee, and I am dragging it to others, and I get the right figures. So uh, now the the note I have given it: if you are not likely to drag the cell either horizontally or vertically, the formula holds good. Otherwise, you have to introduce the dollar. Now um, I know all the Captain Subramanian and uh, all Star Wars are there. Um, sir, please permit me to use um, the computer. Way of explaining the lines. I'll explain. This table has to be manually fed from the hydrostatic tables. Um, if you want, you can have only the final drafts. Make it ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, or whatever. Or at ten, fourteen, eighteen meters. If your ship is big, maybe fourteen, sixteen, eighteen. You can do only three lines, and you can get the job done. Um, now, given. Yes, please. The yellow cells are the given uh, drafts. I have introduced the top line is a line which is less than the draft given draft in the table, and the bottom line is which is the higher value than what is given in the table. Here the table we are taking it as one meter, but in the ships, as we know, some ships are giving every centimeters. Some ships are giving twenty centimeters or even twenty-five uh, centimeters. Also, some ships are giving. so at the bottom. Now, uh, here in the same way, the top line, but and the difference of course, difference between the draft. I'll explain the the displacement also exactly in the same way we do it. Now we come to the most important. the highlight of this session, session is v lookup now we will calculate the draft for will calculate the particulars for the 7 meters v lookup function has to be input with three or four um lookup value that means i want to look for value of 7 range containing the lookup value that means this particular data where i have the Value where that value should be looked in column number. As we know, the draft is one displacement, uh, and again I'll explain number three. Why I have we written number three? DPC and up to ten columns we have it. Fourth one you can leave it and true or false. Since it is not sorted out, we say it is false. Now the formula will look like this. Very simple formula will look like. what we can see it in c27 i'll read it out for you for though it may take few seconds i'll read it out we look up d4 where i got the 7 meters table is in c between say table is between c13 and l20 and column 2 i want the displacement false and i have already explained the purpose of the dollar the formula will look with the dollar like this now when i put the in this cell that formula which is there in c31 is fed in for first value i got it subsequently when i drag it i'll just remove these ones when i drag the cell including tpc lcb everywhere it is coming as 14299 because the column numbers have to be changed i want to search go to the draft go to the first column get me the second column data get me fourth column data get me ninth column data that is what i am going to say we look up the red digit 3 is there that is where 7 and uh, let us say km transfers matter center then 9 is there 8.258 is what is given there now the rest of it is very simple uh, once you understood this now what i have written it this I think all of you can see that uh, we look up round down. Now, when I say that seven point four, I said round down. It will take to seven meters. I already got that seven meter. I have to read between two lines. The first line, the top line, I call it a seven, and the bottom line is eight. And by inserting this one, the most important thing is getting seven and eight. Once you get it, then you just have to drag the items. And you will get the figure. Now the ratio. 
this is a very familiar uh, formula which i have given it uh, written it easily for anybody to recall a uh, given value minus top line all the, the computer part of it computer will say c16 minus c17 divided by c18 minus c17 so this is how you get about a point to that i have given 7.2 draft let's say 7.2 then that is how it is now the values for 7.2 i have given it in english ratio into difference plus and the computer value is is equal to c dollar 20 into 19 plus c 17 now here i'll just show you in one second once i have the first figure drag it and you will get the second figure and here also you can see that differences in the exactly in the same way this is for displacement now because it is more than the figure what is beyond the table there is the tables are giving only up to 21498 whereas i have input the figure of 25000 so naturally it is showing the error results so i can come back to what our 20000 or the figure what is available there uh here what happens this is the uh, the reason why i inserted the draft again is the search field the search column shall be in number 1 if i am searching in the displacement if i am looking for 20000 that should be available in number 1 so i have changed the for the computer i have changed the range the tabular column from d to l not the earlier was c to l now i made it to d to l and again once i get the draft the rest of the particulars are quite easy now we go back to our uh, powerpoint give me one minute time i will stop the sharing and go back to powerpoint in one second i'll be waiting Yes. Okay. What we have done today in this session is only three. It is a very small. We can't see the screen yet. Yeah. Okay. 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 I'm just getting. okay today what we have done is only uh, as all of you seen only interpolation and uh, but the easiness at which it can be done we can apply to all other fields wherever uh, for anything what we are doing at home whether it is a personal or private i thank uh, synergetic solution for giving an opportunity to present and in guiding me in preparing the content i thank all the participants for listening to me patiently thank you sir. over to captain archer thank you thank you so much uh, captain thank you sir ram krishnan uh, uh, in digital learning uh, he has taken a lot of effort to uh, simplify a uh, very tough uh, demonstration unless uh, each of you have a laptop with you and work on it uh, don't feel that you learned it but thank you very much for all the present uh, the effort you have taken uh, during very very few mastermind in us take this effort to pick up excel but excel and uh, we will now uh, to our next uh, uh, captain rajesh nambiar and um, uh, captain vivek rathod stopped at uh, the problems that ai could face and uh, it sort of merges into captain rajesh nambiar's uh, presentation on cyber security so uh, Uh, Shubka has been a very uh, dynamic person, and uh, I've been long associated with him. Because uh, you know, one thing what a teacher loves is a student who listens, and um, he's been with me in Massa Academy for many years, right from his second year foundation to the masters, and now extra masters. 
he joined the uh, the uh, uh, shipping in 2000 we call him the millennium shippy and after approximately 15 years various companies uh, joined post fixture operations with cargill uh, 18 months of operation he joined this true calling which is pilotage so he likes to pilot and guide people uh, uh, jesus christ was a kid really employed with um, Coaching Port Trust, completing five years. He has actually completed a seminar and workshop on habits of highly effective teachers, and is an auditor of learning systems certified by Synergistic Solution. He joined the exam. That means if you really want to understand that, are you able to transfer your knowledge? He can uh, help you do that. Exams to come solution, uh, the pioneering batch, and completed all A, B, C. He cleared A, part of B, uh, and uh, awaiting for the results of C. So he's a fellow of the company of Masmeners, and one of the most dynamic chapters right now is the coaching chapter. Uh, so over to you, Rajesh. You got about twenty minutes, and then we'll have questions for Rajesh and Vivek together. You are muted. Mute. Unmute. Unmute. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, just a quick check. Am I audible, loud and clear? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'll just uh, start my screen. All good. Then we'll proceed from there. So, is my screen visible, sir? Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, uh, respected Ajay Achudan, sir. Uh, yes, he is rightly said. He's been my guru, mentor in my life, right from second mates and now up to extra masters. It's been a real privilege. uh all the other distinguished uh, members of the fraternity over here very senior members captain subramaniam sir captain philip matthews i see a lot of names in the list really honored and privileged to be talking in front of you all uh and all other members of the fraternity other friends who have joined all the other attendees a very very good evening to all of you <clears throat> i must say that uh, you know corona has taught us lot of things one thing is the definition and understanding of essential services or essential items and i am not i'm sure not many of us would have put a strong stable and sturdy internet connection in part of our essential equipment or essential services list till corona came calling and i started to think what would be the condition of the world and world affairs if internet was not around it would have literally been stand still so that is where i derive my courage and my vision to talk about cyber security because with every boon comes a bane a hidden hazard and we mariners have always been subject to new technology and at the same time understanding embracing and living with the limitations and i am from that generation of mariners who joined sea gps had just become the norm but then we soon realized that gps was not as hunky dory there were a lot of other issues along with it so we couldn't just get away with the other means of position fixing today the one of the best toys available for the navigator and i must say even as a pilot i use it as well is the egdis on board the vessels it's a wonderful aid but then we all are now beginning to understand the limitations there are detail analysis of the same the limitations associated with egdis and what safety features we need to follow in the same way internet comes with its own drawbacks internet has its own pitfalls and it is only essential that we start embracing and understanding the risks associated with a renewed and a sustained influence of internet in our lives and that is where i'll start my presentation the cyber security for mariners just an introductory session nowhere intended to be exhaustive the objectives for my the basic introduction acknowledging the contribution of the regulators and the industry familiarization with some basic terms which we hear and examples of some real life incidents of cyber attacks in the shipping and consequences potential fallouts and just a hint at the possible solutions so what is cyber security cyber security is the protection of interconnected systems including humanware hardware software and data from cyber attacks now i must acknowledge the contribution of uh, synergistic solutions and masa academy who have introduced this term humanware and i first heard this when i was doing my bridge team management with uh, ajay sir and increasingly as we go along humanware is being 
a very very important aspect in maritime domain cyber protection protection is deemed against an authorized modification an authorized deletion and an authorized access these are the three main threats that we look at the imo has given a detailed description that's put up on the slide it is taken from the website of imo on what is a maritime cyber risk okay the overall goal of course is to support safe and secure shipping which is operationally resilient to cyber risks due to the uh, shortage of time i will not be reading through all these slides i will just be using that as a addition to my main lecture thank you the imo has been not far behind in fact it has issued a very wonderful circular a very contemporary and revising it continuously the msc fal 1 circular 3 guidelines on maritime cyber risk management dated 5th of july 2017 the msc at the 98th session the 428th regulation has also adopted a resolution maritime cyber risk management it basically encourages administration to include cyber into the ism code practices basically it will be coming on to the sms verification and the first annual verification of the company's document of compliance after 1st january 2021 this will be encouraged our own dgs has been very active in this dgs has understood the importance of cyber security and it is a very important module in the em201 of part b of the revised extra master certificate of competency requirements like captain daniel had said some time back it is available on your website nt exam circular number 1 of 2019 dgs was quick off the blocks and as early as 2017 it had identified this risk of cyber security and promulgated a circular engineering circular number 6 with a corrigendum boosting it by 2011 2017 the industry is not far behind industry has been very very proactive if you go on the website of bimco you can see the guidelines on cyber security on board ships version 3.0 and it is jointly developed with rail industry leading clear intermanager ics intercargo intertanko ocimf iumi and the world shipping council there are technical guidelines on the same the iso iec 2027001 guidelines of course the united states national institute of standards and technologies framework for improving critical infrastructure cyber security has also brought in their own guidelines and the intention of this session is not to make it a very technical session but however certain basic terminology which now has become part of our daily vocabulary will have to be introduced to keep the spirit of this session alive malware a malware is like an umbrella term it's of any program or file that is harmful to the computer user you must have heard with terms like viruses worms trojan horses spyware malicious programs they are all coming under the umbrella of malware next ransomware now ransomware is a very dangerous thing for corporate business houses i'm sure you must have heard of the vanacry uh, ransomware and i will be talking about something else that has happened to our own fraternity it is trying to lock your software to put in very simple words it is something similar to kidnapping and abduction you kidnap somebody in this case you are kidnapping the software your complete data will be locked you will have to pay a ransom for them to open it back up or else you risk losing all your company's data phishing and social engineering are quite common and related so i will be speaking together you you must have come across many warnings from your banks many information on the website from your friends of people trying to solicit data out of you without your understanding the phishing could be in the form of a malicious email they may be trying to take out your credit card information username passwords different ways of electronic communication of doing that social engineering is another way of doing it by psychological manipulation you may get a wonderful authentic sounding phone call asking you that of very everything looking very authentic from the bank in the process trying to extract information out of you and worst taking an otp out of you wiping out your social uh, wiping out your account or something even worse than that internet of things gentlemen and ladies who are here this is something which we are all going to be seeing a quite a lot of reference to this in the future now without going into the technical aspect let me give you an example 
you are working in your office you finish your office you get up you start walking towards your car parking lot your mobile having sensed with the time given of your completion time with the change in its gps positioning gives a signal to your car which is already having an e sim an electronic sim embedded into it and as you start moving towards the parking lot your car starts on its own and runs the ac so by the time you reach your car you open the door your inside is already cooled ready the engine is warm everything ready for you to start moving you start moving towards your home 15 to 20 minutes before you reach home calculating the speed using the gps your car or your mobile has already communicated to your air conditioner that is linked to your home wifi and communicated your position to it without any other human interference your air conditioner already comes on and by the time you reach home you open your door your home is to the temperature setting of your choice i am not talking avengers i am not talking skyfi here ladies and gentlemen i am talking home automation and this is something which is very very in vogue and happening as we speak around the world including india next i would like to talk about something called machine learning the machine learning i'll give another with an example of all of you who like to play computer games if you have noticed carefully especially in games strategy games like chess you will realize that the machine seems to be learning how you are playing the game a uh, some strategy something which worked the last time may not work again and you wonder how did that computer bring this move well the answer is machine learning because the machine without any interference on its own is learning how the user is interacting and coming up with solutions adapting on its own that is machine learning now i'm coming to an example or some examples of real life incidents on how cyber attacks have hit us in 2018 you know musk the biggest container company in the world was hit by the paytm ransomware attack published reports say that for them to break out of this the loss was 300 million dollars next we have msc the second largest container company in the world very recently the easter weekend it had suffered a malware attack at their geneva headquarters further details not known in may this year that is just a couple of weeks back our own anglo eastern one of the leading ship management companies of the world a number one job provider for indians was attacked by ransomware again only information i have is that the email system was completely crashed further details not known this is another firm when i was with my short term working on behalf of kagil this used to be a very very common fraud which used to catch on a daily basis you are trying to make payment to a bunker firm which just given bunker to one of your time chartered vessels and when you type everything everything looks fine but they have hacked your system and changed one digit one name something there and you think you are paying the bunker company what the money is being transferred to the hacker this is another way of cyber attack you can have crucial navigation systems like the egg disk can be hit it actually happened one of the crew had brought a usb stick on board that's with some paperwork it connected to the computer it was connected to the egg disk and everything went bust because that is how many people don't realize that you really don't need to sometimes even open the usb stick just connecting it to the computer can get the virus to be transferred you can see the vulnerability scenario for us as mariners a gap in upgrading infrastructure we vis a vis the technology has left shipping highly vulnerable we are very happy to adopt a new technology that comes in we are very very happy to show that we are number one we have got ahead of others but in that in that love for technology love for gadgets love to be ahead we sometimes forget the limitations the hidden pitfalls and that is why a proper risk management is very very essential in any sort of upgrading in this sort now every ship relies on electronic devices for their operations from communication to logistics so a lot of avenues for a hacker you need software nowadays to run the modern engine we are talking about the latest intelligent engines you got cds running an engine you got cds determining software for the engine as well as the egg disk for your navigation shipping industry involves high value assets so it's a huge incentive for a hacker to spend his time and energy to come up with a hacking solution 
potential threats, you have navigational disaster that can happen with hacking of GPS exits. You can have cyber attacks on the ship's communication systems. You can have changing of cargo documentation online and logistics network without nobody knowing till the last minute. You can have fraudulent money transfer by hacking accounting software. EBL is a wonderful technology in the dry bulk business that can reduce the biggest bane for operators and for the charters, the LOI. But an adoption of a wonderful thing like EBL can be really, really delayed because of the possibility of threats. VTMS can be hacked. And can, can, can you imagine what can happen if the VTMS is hacked from a terrorist angle, even our busy Singapore or Malacca Straits? Cruise list high value passengers details can be leaked. What are the solutions? Well, let me be very uh, honest here. I am not trying to give any exhaustive list of solutions. These are just suggestions and a, just a scrape in the surface. Introduction of a cybersecurity culture with appropriate policy and a cost benefit analysis to start off. Compulsory compliance with IMO, DGS and industry requirements and guidelines. Dissemination of information. It has mostly been seen that cyber attacks, the information is not very forthcoming from the victims. We need to have a free and fair relay of information like we have on the piracy attacks. Free and fair information dissemination. Drills, well, you will have to include now cyber attack drills as part of the management culture. And I have highlighted something there and we all need to be aware of this. In a haste to adopt technology, do not overlook time-tested seafarer skills independent of technology. Like we love to say, you can bring the latest modern ships, you can have the latest modern technology, but rough weather and seawater is not going anywhere. Remember, the list of incidents, risks and solutions discussed is in by no way exhaustive, but just a scrape on the surface. Anything connected to the internet is hackable. What is needed is a culture that mitigates vulnerability by eradicating risky behavior. And what is that culture I'm talking about? I'll talk in this point. Let me give you an example. I have been a box shipman all my life, sailed on different sizes container ships. And this is a typical scenario that happens. You're all aware with thousands of containers being loaded, the cargo plan is brought from the shore. The planner brings the USB on board. You connect your USB to your computer with the, uh, the Loadicator software in that. You open the file for the plan. You check the plan. You import the plan. You talk with the planner, any amendments, give him back the USB. You think it's all done. What you don't realize is maybe that USB was his private property. Maybe he had some private files and even without his knowledge, there was a virus. That virus has gone inside your Loadicator computer. You didn't do anything about that and you don't know how it is going to hit your computer, which is going to decide your complete safety, stability calculations. Even worse, now if you are in a situation where that computer is connected to your onboard LAN system, so you have this virus now from the loadicator without anybody's intention and awareness traveling all the way to the chief engineer's computer and also to the master's communication computer, worst case scenario, the ship could lose communications. So this is what I was coming to when I say the culture, understanding the risk we are running, educating, training, and make sensitizing people on board and ensuring that the human element or the human wear is aware of future threats. To sum it up, my only request to all of us, to all of you everywhere, all mariners, let us endeavor to make the ships smart, safe and not just seaworthy but also e-worthy. Before I wind up, I would like to give my sincere thanks to Captain Ajay Achutan, Captain Subhash Deshpande, Mr. Ankesh Sinha, Dr. Samyukta Ajay, all faculty from uh, for the Extra Masters program in Synergistic Solutions, the Extra Master study material for semesters too, a lot of my colleagues which I have not named separately here and I have also listed out the websites from where I have taken out most of my and almost all the other extracts. Thank you very much, sir. So thank you, Rajesh, for a really wonderful presentation. Very very can impact. It's about uh, five minutes uh, more left before we have the next speaker joining in.
So I'll take a couple of questions. Uh, since uh, you please go through the questions, uh, Rajesh, on the chat box on the question answer session. So I'll uh, ask Vivek to answer this uh, some of the things before. So you can just uh, uh, go to questions. Uh, Vivek, uh, there have been a uh, question from uh, Jovin Wilfred. Uh, it says that uh, would wouldn't use of AI for facilitating tasking of signups. Uh, you get the question? Right, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the, the question from uh, Mr. John Field read that uh, use of AI for facilitation of simultaneous multitasking on board officers. This is uh, quite a relevant question which you are facing uh, day to day life together. And if we see at the time of uh, the docking of the vessel, like we are flooding the vessel during the undocking, we have got multiple tasks going on at the same time where the chief engineer, the master, the, the chief officer, second engineer, electric officer, we are on the short supply, vessel is flooding, we have to check the uh, soundings, we have to unmoor the vessel, we have to keep vessel moving, and all the those operations are simultaneous. So we have been at the at sea being used to for doing the tasks which are multitasking, but at the same time keep the operations safe. And but we have to train our juniors, delegate the jobs to the junior officers or the crew so that the operation is not compromised safely. So your question that will use of AI facilitate is uh, definitely it will be helping us to check if my tanks are uh, flooding in case my duct keel has been worked or some side shell flooding has been renewed in the, in the dock. And is it flooding or not flooding? If the, it's flooding, then alarm should come uh, automatically to the, uh, to the duty officer in the bridge or in the engine room. Then automation will be helping us to know if the, the area which has been worked is uh, some issue is coming in. While remote monitoring of critical jobs is uh, yet to be ascertained because uh, uh, the human intelligence is uh, still the best uh, to sense some critical jobs, some dangers are happening while the robotics have to learn in. So I, my look on this topic that is robot uh, is one uh, uh, against uh, the risk on is we still need to monitor it on board by the senior officers, the top four officers, because the robotics uh, can definitely ease it, but cannot release the, the option of the senior officer to monitor things. So we need to continuously monitor the things and uh, improve upon because uh, for one thing is this, because uh, the human intelligence so can, they can't uh, be can be uh, natural. Sir, 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 one thing more, sir, yeah. yeah is there an increase of increased workload? So the remote monitoring, it will be in future when we have to look upon the drones carrying on the carrying on the on board the vessel, few cargoes. Like Singapore, we might be having the stores coming with the drones. It might be looking a very remote uh, possibility as of now. But in the future, you can have the uh, things will be coming in. So we have to constantly be forward looking and look to the uh, automation with a uh, better and positive outlook. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, Hello. Uh, yes, sir. Can you hear me? No, sir. No. Can you hear me? No, sir. No. Your voice is breaking the afternoon, Ajay. Yeah, can you take over, Kunal? Uh, I think. Sure. We're going to continue the question answer session later. We're sure. going to continue the question answer session later. So, Kunal, please take over. Sure. Uh, good evening, everybody. Again, so this brings us to our second uh, uh, part of the of today's webinar, which is money management amidst COVID-19. And our speaker, our next speaker, is Mr. Amit Rati. Uh, Mr. Rati is the managing director for Anand Rati Wealth Services Limited. Amit has set up the private wealth and the investment banking uh, businesses for the Rati family and the Rati Group. Just to give you a bit of a background. 
The private wealth business is among the top three in the country, managing about 21,000 crores of assets across 5,000 odd families as on date. In terms of Amit's background, in terms of his education, he has over two decades of education experience. He has two decades of experience being uh, part of the Indian financial markets since the 1990s. And therefore, he has seen many such market cycles like the one we are seeing in today's day of COVID-19. Amit is a rank holder, ch uh, chartered accountant, and an MBA from New York uh, University Stern Business School. He is also a member of the Mumbai chapter of the Young Presidents Organization and co-chairs the NYU Stern India Alumni Group. So just like Captain Nambiar was earlier mentioning that uh, Captain Ajay is also a mentor and role model to him, a lot of us at Anandrati Amit is also a, a mentor for us and a role model. So I'll hand it over to you, Amit, sir, uh, for the next 30-35 minutes. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Vinal. Thank you, gentlemen, for having me here. Uh, I hope my audio is uh, visible and it's great that, you know, all of you are spending time on a Saturday afternoon. I think uh, boundaries are blurred uh, of time, you know, in these, there is no weekend, there is no weekday. That's the one big change uh, in the COVID situation. Uh, but it's great to be here. And I think, uh, you know, uh, what I will talk about and I have got some slides which I will share, which sort of make it easier to, you know, have this conversation and then we can have a quick uh, Q&A as well after that. Uh, so let me just start uh, with. Uh... <coughs> so I think, you know, uh, today, of course, COVID, we have an exceptional situation in what's happening with the markets and economy. But I think if we go back and do the basics, right. Uh, and, I, and I think investing is a very simple process where a lot of us overcomplicate. But if we just focus on the important things and, you know, Write these down. Principles. These are principles that I will follow. You know, then the chances of making mistakes and being able to survive these periods is very, very strong. Uh, I think we don't spend as much time thinking about these things. And, uh, you know, this title of this presentation also, if you see, is what I believe most sophisticated. You know, a lot of people sometimes also think I've seen very smart sort of, uh, you know, sophisticated people in life normally, but miss out on these very, very simple things that we're uh, see on the investment side. So what are those things, you know? So let's see the first is goals, right? And all of you guys, you know, will understand that it's very important that when you start a journey, investing is also a journey. Where do you wish to go? We can't, you know, it's like sailing. You can't be sailing endlessly without navigating. You know, you need to have, I need to get from point A to point B. Most people actually invest without having a goal in mind. It's an odd goal. We don't want to take risk. And you know, what is a great investment at this point of time? They will ask around and sort of invest without having a goal. It's like playing a one-day match. Imagine a cricket analogy. You one day cricket and you don't know how to make a target in 50 hours. You know, even a team that is batting first has some sort of target in mind. A team chasing, of course, has a big target, you know, has a clear target in mind. We want to make a score. So, I think having a goal in sort of in writing is the first important step that most investors miss out on. And I think there are three important goals which are relevant for all of us. And right, well, goals are very simple. Agar hum isko is se soche ki wealth kya cheez hai. What is wealth? Or the savings that we've got. What are those savings? That is nothing but deferred consumption. Money that we have saved for some future spending. Right? Money by itself has no value. It is what we do with that money that will create value. The fact that we are not spending that money today and we are saving it, which means we are saving it for some future spending, maybe by ourselves, maybe in times of emergency or maybe by our future generation, right? It's only for money is there to be spent or be available for spending at some point of time. And this then creates sort of automatically when we think of wealth like this, three goals become important. Uh, one is that we beat inflation. Whatever we could buy today, we should be able to buy at least that much 10 years, 20 years, 30 years later. And most of us believe, you know, and we know that inflation is a good measure to sort of look at it. You know, that we have to beat inflation because the cost of goods and services is rising at the rate of inflation, which is, you know, so here we've shared a very interesting uh, data. So the government says inflation in India last 30 years has been 7%. And a lot of individuals think, 
yeah if i make 7% i am beating inflation but what they don't understand is inflation is specific to all of us aapka inflation my inflation might be different what the government is measuring as inflation is for 98% of india which is actually poor and why are, why am i saying that you know it is not relevant for us because they assume that 50% of the expenditure basket is in is towards food now i'm sure all the people on this you know online today are not people who are spending 50% of their income or savings on food uh, that may be relevant for india as a country for all of the poor you know uh, brethren that we have but this is not the nature of expenditure that we have so what we did was we said let's look at what are the things most people spend on and you know all of you can make something for yourselves as well to understand what basket of goods and services are you likely to spend on and uska inflation measure kare to humne the generic you know we made one uh, you know data slide we looked at what are the big things that affluent families spend on one we looked at the tradition spending on jewelry gold they want to send their kids overseas for education they want to travel internationally you know there are weddings in the family so where we have you know banquet halls uh so what did for example uh, you know a uh, five star hotel cost of a banquet per plate was 30 years back what is it today destination weddings buying bigger houses in india and abroad uh and over and above this we are also looking at lifestyle upgrades so as families you know agar if i was traveling if by train 20 years back today people want to fly by default 20 years later my aspiration is i should be able to fly business class every time i we all also want to upgrade our lifestyle that is over and above this but our sense is that a 9 10% number is more realistic inflation for high net worth uh, or affluent families it's not 6 7% that the government says so our goal has to be that we at least beat that 10% <coughs> and not just 10% we create a cushion over about 10% where we get you know for lifestyle upgrade etc we get 12 to 15% long term returns is it possible of course we'll see that but what is the risk that you know if people say are i am happy amit i am happy to make 7% only i don't want anything else but then we should do the math that today if i have 10 crores at 7% in 30 years the 10 crores will become 76 almost 7 and a half times which is fantastic right but 76 is not good enough at if inflation is 10% we need it to be at 174 crores which means that what we can buy today with 10 crores we will need 174 crores after 30 years to buy the same things and if we end up only with 76 we have destroyed about 60% of our wealth right this is the power of compounding of inflation and therefore losing sight of what inflation rate we are targeting or we need to beat is a big big risk uh, so is the first thing what should buy what should our return goal be <coughs> as an individual as a family what is the uh, target we need to beat goal number 2 is theek hai we have grown money to a certain rate but what and we have seen in lot of cases when the money is needed actually it is not available why because there is some liability there is some litigation is it it has become illiquid ki jab paise you know we have seen for example cases where uh, somebody the director of a company or a professional liability comes on to somebody then whether we like it or not our savings also get today all authorities everybody courts the first thing that they go after is attaching personal assets of individuals and we have seen lot of cases unfortunately of people who are you know just happen to be at the wrong place at the wrong time they were directors on companies a uh, lot of people who run businesses today take bank loans they give personal guarantees so even though they have limited com- liability companies their personal balance sheet is actually at risk the other of course is squander you know as this money goes to next generation are they capable enough or mature enough to use that money if it comes to them early how do you prevent certain portion of the money not be squandered away that it is protected and available only for the lifestyle third aspect around safety net is it should be in liquid assets agar you know we have seen cases where let's say money is stuck in some real estate and there are four members of the family fighting over that real estate but nobody can sell it because it requires everybody to come on the table and liquidate it so creating a safety net for the family where certain amount of money is always free from any liability is always liquid that is the second goal in rbi that money should be available when we actually need it it's like aapka best friend or doctor when in emergency if they don't pick the phone what's the point of uh, you know 
that's the time when you need them the most so this is the second thing which we believe is an important goal the third goal <coughs> again very important is that if we don't consume this money in our lifetime or wealth as it goes from us to the next generation how do we ensure there is zero transmission loss ab transmission loss kaise hota hai one in india right now we don't have but will come eventually uh, we had in the 80s was inheritance tax or estate duties for example in countries like the us the government charges almost 40 45% of the wealth as a tax when it moves from one generation to the other for the rich people so in india that risk is there but second risk is you know how do we have clear wills so there is no dispute in the family uh, everything is clearly you know nominations joint holdings are all in line with the will uh, you know other angle is uh, is the next generation trained so for example i have seen cases where uh, you know give you a example i was sitting with a family in uh, delhi many years back and uh, their children were all overseas but unhone you know he had bought lots of lands in up haryana gurgaon side he had he had a lot of large land bank situation so we you know we were discussing that if something happened to that gentleman <coughs> kids are all in the us and canada how will they liquidate those lands what will they do with that money well i mean how will they even access the money because let's say if they call a broker in delhi ki bhai land bechna hai wo bolega sir 70 30 70% cash hai 30% check hai those kids will have no idea how to handle deal with that so in most cases they will end up sort of giving it away in a distress situation so ensuring that we train people in the next generation and also look at their ability to handle the assets that we've created is very very important as a third sort of uh, goal the second this comes to second thing which i think we miss out on most people miss out on is measurement right so agar if i have started a journey you know to go from point a to point b i have to see my raste mein time pe am i on track am i not on track again give you example of a one day match if i'm chasing a target i should know ki 2500 mere itne ban gaye this is my required run rate to get to the balance you know and this is speed i need to increase decrease uh, it's like when you guys sail you have the same you know you need to know you know where you've reached in the journey to be able to navigate and i think this is again very important where when i ask most families ki sir aapke personal portfolio ka last year return kya tha people have no idea sir aapke 5 saal mein net worth kitni badi people have no idea you know they know acha chal raha hai matlab but and they remember some hits and they remember some losses but they don't have proper management information reports which tell them very simple things sir mera goal kya tha us goal ke samne main kahan pahuncha hu where have i reached what is my best year been what is my worst year been because once you see these numbers is where one can decide whether we are on the right track wrong track do we need to change something or not uh, so again very very important that we measure against these goals the third is to understand what actually drives returns right because we are investing to make money right and it's important to understand fundamentally what is the aspect that drives returns in the long term so what i'm sharing with you <coughs> is a very interesting study done by three university of chicago professors in the early 90s where they looked at about 80 odd pension funds in the us and sabke returns ko unhone compare kiya somebody got 6% somebody got 8% somebody got 10% over 10 years 20 years 30 years lot of differences so what they did was they did one interesting uh, you know analysis they said whenever we make investment decisions we are actually not making one decision we are making three decisions which is asset allocation security selection market timing let me explain how so today if i decide to buy reliance stock i am deciding to buy equity which is asset allocation i could have bought property second security selection i am buying reliance i could have bought tcs third is market timing i am buying it today i could have also waited why am i buying it today but the combination of these three decisions makes up one investment decision and what the study found was that market timing best time to buy and sell explained less than 2% of the difference in results between investors security selection which is the best stock property bond to buy explained less than 5% of the difference almost 92 to 93% of the difference was simply on the asset allocation decision which means were you in the right market at the right time right so which means that if for example property market today is struggling it does not matter what property you have you will struggle likewise in the equity market in the last two months but it's ensuring that you catch the trend right of the asset class over the 
time horizon that you have. So let's say about ten year horizon, I have to see in the ten year period which asset class is likely to do well. It's easier to swim with the tide than against the tide. It's almost impossible to swim against the tide in any market. Uh, and we'll share with you one Indian analysis that we, you know, study that we did. So here again, we get back to 1990, and we said if I had one crore back in 1990. आज उसकी वैल्यू क्या होती इन डिफरेंट एसेट क्लासेस हाउ इज एसेट एलोकेशन डिसीजन प्लेड आउट इन इंडिया सो वन ऑफ कोर्स बी मेड वाज नो टैक्सेस जस्ट टू मेक इट इक्वेलेंट कि भाई जो भी रिटर्न है वो टैक्स फ्री एक तरह से कंपाउंड करने के लिए सो एन एफ डी वुड बिकम टेन टाइम्स टेन करोड एट एट परसेंट पर एनम गोल्ड वुड बिकम फोर्टीन करोड एट अबाउट नाइन परसेंट पर एनम रेसिडेंशियल प्रॉपर्टीज प्राइम रेसिडेंशियल प्रॉपर्टीज इन डेली बैंगलोर मुंबई वुड हैव बिकम एटीन टू ट्वेंटी थ्री करोड which is only about 9 10% per annum so a lot of us think my property has gone up 20 times of course it has gone up 20 times but in how much time it has taken 30 years for it to go up 20 times now moment we start you know in properties we don't ever think of returns as percentage returns ki mujhe property mein yaar 11 and a half percent return mila per annum no debt equity mein we calculate percentage in real estate we only talk in terms of multiples so our multiples are good Actual return has only been nine, ten, eleven percent in most properties over long periods of time. If I bought equities, and I just bought the Sensex, the thirty stocks in the BSC Sensex, and blindly copied that, I would be at thirty-six crores, which is thirteen percent per annum. But then we said that India may Sensex is not representative because India may economy has changed dramatically since nineteen ninety. A lot of the best companies, which were great companies thirty years back, have changed because economy, apne you know, we are developing very rapidly. So we said, let's look at mutual funds, which had the opportunity to readjust their portfolio. And we said, in 1990, if I invested in the Sensex, and the moment the scheme of any private sector fund started, the first scheme, we bought into the scheme. That money would have become 250, 300 crores today, about 20, 22 percent per annum. Right now, it is a very startling number. I have rarely come across anybody who has made money, who has made their money 200, 250 times in 30 years. It's because most people have not stayed. This journey, and you see the difference between ten percent and thirteen percent. You will see a massive, you know, twenty almost fifty percent greater return, almost double return. See the difference between thirteen percent and twenty percent. The compounding impact over thirty years again very very massive. So the asset allocation has also played out in India as a theme, and therefore you know, and this is sort of reflected in the kind of returns investors have made over long periods of time. The fourth is lot of you know. People, of course, are interested in equity markets. We all believe equity market per return can be made, but we don't know that equity risk is can also be managed. It's about understanding how that risk, you know, how that risk comes. So one is we did one again simple, and and really we you know when I'm sharing a lot of these charts is because we believe in data. कि यार मेरे आपको कुछ भी हिंदी इंग्लिश गुजराती मराठी में समझाऊं it's irrelevant if I can show you with data. It helps me build my conviction because you know this is. We've gone back 30, 40 years of data. Every daily trading data, trading data to see how markets have actually behaved. So, <coughs> the first slide on the top is where if I invested in the Nifty any day for one year, what would my return be? And you will see a lot of volatility. I don't know if you can see in your screens. There is a thin line here, which is the long-term average of 13 and a half percent or 14 percent. That average, but on a year-to-year -year basis, we don't see averages. We see lots of ups and downs. In fact, we see you know three or four times we've lost thirty, forty percent in a single year. And a lot of people believe that one year is long-term investing horizon in equity. I told them a long-term investor, I'm willing to hold for a year. Long-term income tax case, up to okay, but for equity, one year is not long-term. And I'll show you why. Because the chances of losing money are so high. But the moment I hold my portfolio for five years. You see, my return becomes far more steady, and my chances of losing money almost disappear. Moment I hold it for ten years, I am almost ninety percent of the time beating thirteen, forty percent return, never losing money. Which means that the holding period that one man is looking at equity market has to be ten years, five, ten years, not one, two, three years. It has to be a five, ten year plus period for us when we are looking at equity. That's when the risk comes down. Of course, we will go through these ups and downs, but eventually we will end up with a far more stable return. If we hold for ten years, because every time there will be the COVID, there will be a great financial crisis, there will be a tech bubble collapse, there will be some all the other crisis that is always happening around the world, <coughs> and which is what, if you hold for ten years, 
we will find that businesses adapt to crisis and always come out entrepreneurs know how to deal with it but you have to give them time and which is why equity investing has to have a 5 10 year uh, horizon but there is another simpler way also right it, which is also that a lot of people say amit yaar this is fine but when they are going through ups and downs for example you know in the last two months if any of you you know were holding equities it has been a nerve wracking experience the kind of drop we saw in march and april right is there a way to sort of protect yourself there and a lot of people don't know that like we can buy health insurance car insurance you can also buy equity market insurance which is available on the nsc where you can actually pay a premium to protect yourself from a downside in the market today those are called leaps internationally uh, these are long term you know equity anticipation securities but in india we also call them puts these are put options that are available in the stock market ek put option hota hai when you have an option as a buyer of a put option you pay a premium today and you have the right to demand any loss that happens from the level at which you bought that put option on maturity so let's say today you know uh, nifty is 9000 you bought a put for 9000 today for one year if nifty goes down to 7000 at the end of one year the 2000 points that has gone down you can recover from a nsc will compensate you for the drop of course you have to pay a premium for it today <coughs> if the market is higher we get nothing our premium is gone it's like car insurance or health insurance now most people also don't realize that the cost of this insurance for long term is not very expensive people get shocked so to give you an example you know typically when we invest in equity markets we are looking at 15 17 18% returns but we are taking the full risk of the downside in normal times the cost of this insurance is only about 2% a year so if i'm willing to sacrifice 2% of my return and saying chalo i don't mind 2% goes down i can protect myself from any loss which means nifty can go to zero i will still ensure my capital is protected that means instead of making 18% or 16% i am happy to make 14% but with zero risk on capital which means i can sleep peacefully at night i don't have to worry that i can do this of course right now these premiums are elevated because of the crash we've had there's a lot of fear in the market but things will stabilize and premiums will come back to normal uh at about 2% a year the cost has been typically for the last 5 7 8 years so we should see those levels come back again and if a lot of you who are equity investors or even scared of equity investing in fact this is a great way to enter the markets by buying this protection uh alongside your equity exposure <coughs> the other is you know that we've seen that equity market sort of you know are there real estate everything is there but we've seen lot of these alternative investments that have been marketed in the last you know sort of 10 15 years in india globally also they are popular but we've seen most often they destroy value what are alternatives they are private equity funds real estate funds venture capital funds they all sound exotic they very interesting but in india our experience has been that lot of them have delivered only 4 5% return locking up your money for 8 10 15 years uh, the fund managers have made more money than the investors and i won't you know sort of belabor this point you know we'll share these slides later but you can look at the data jitna apan simple kare kam that is uh, uh uh better right this alternative complex stuff most people are actually not made money in the long term here's a very interesting example i'll quickly take you through so here was a investment that we saw with a client who had invested in a debenture ja real estate loan diya tha builder ko and they had said ki they'll get 22% return on the debenture and there are some fees and charges so we did the mathematics on that ki chalo 22% return hai aapne us debenture pe aapne khareeda hai उसमें से वन एंड हाफ परसेंट उसने मैनेजमेंट फी ले ली जिसने बॉन्ड इश्यू किया उनको यू आर लेफ्ट ट्वेंटी एंड हाफ परसेंट देन दे ऑल्सो प्रॉफिट शेयरिंग कि भाई जो भी प्रॉफिट होगा उसका हम फिफ्टीन परसेंट लेंगे सो दे टू थ्री पॉइंट वन परसेंट सो क्लाइंट गॉट सेवेंटीन पॉइंट फोर परसेंट ग्रॉस आफ्टर दैट दे टू पे टैक्स पोस्ट टैक्स रिटर्न केम टू इलेवन पॉइंट फोर देन द फैक्ट इज दैट दी आई आर ऑल्सो द मनी इज नॉट डिप्लॉयड एट ऑल पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम एंड यू रीडिप्लॉयमेंट राइट सो वेन यू एडजस्ट फॉर दैट and you adjust for the fact ki jab apne bond wale ko jab apne unko paise diye and by the time they lent that money also there was a delay the actual return to the investor was only 9.1% post tax so investor made 9 rupees by investing 100 rupees taking the full risk the fund manager made 4.6 and the government made 
सो दिस शोज यू दैट यू नो समाइम्स जस्ट डोंट लुक एट द नंबर एक्चुअली गेट इन टू डिटेल के मेरे हाथ में क्या आएगा इट्स वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू ब्रेक इट डाउन इन टू फाइनल डिटेल्स टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज हैपनिंग दिस अगेन क्लोज एंडेड वर्स इज ओपन एंडेड यू नो लॉर्ड ऑफ अस have been and a lot of you might have also seen over the years that a lot of close ended funds have been marketed in the country uh, with the promise that aap hame time dijiye and we will do well you know give us patient money but we have again seen that most of these guys have underperformed their same open ended brothers in the same fund uh, which means that you know it actually makes sense to just stay in liquid investments one of the principles we have is that whatever money we invest for ourselves or for our clients should be available in liquid in 72 hours we don't want to get to a situation mark paisa bank kai ek saal do saal teen saal lock in ho jaye money should always be uh, liquid and available because all the guys who have taken money historically uh, with lock ins haven't actually delivered uh, compensating you know compensatory high return fact they have delivered lower returns in most cases now this is a interesting one <coughs> stocks versus pms versus mutual funds लॉट ऑफ पीपल बिलीव यार यार मैं दूसरे को पैसा क्यों दू मैनेज करने के लिए मैं खुद ही कर लेता हूँ खुद अपने हाथ से कमाऊंगा यू नो आई एम स्मार्ट इनफ यू नो टू लूज बढ़िया लूज माई ओन हैंड्स आई डोंट ट्रस्ट अदर्स टू मैनेज माई मनी एंड लेट मी ब्रेक इट ऑन यू नो इन यू नो इन टू थिंग्स वन इज माई ओन एक्सपीरियंस इवन आफ्टर यू नो वी रन अ वेरी लार्ज स्टॉक ब्रोकिंग ऑपरेशन विद ऑलमोस्ट हाफ अ मिलियन कस्टमर्स एंड आई सीन द स्टॉक मार्केट सिंस द लेट एटीज आई हैव ट्रेडेड सिंस द लेट एटीज पर्सनली आई सीन द हर्षद मेहता बूम बास्ट uh you know 90s the tech bubble kitan pare collapse so i've seen all these cycles for the last 20 years my own money is in mutual funds and it's there for a reason because we believe in equity markets the person who has the biggest you know advantage is the person who has a information advantage jiske paas information zyada hai they will make more money and most people who are investing in equity markets agree with that so information does not have to be some secret information or inside information it is just the quality and quantity of information insights about businesses and companies ab information kisko flow hoti hai who provides information so you know as an individual i get information let's say you know from my friends from the industry i work in thodi bahut information mujhe aayegi or the broker i call <coughs> a portfolio manager will have 10 15 20 analysts that are doing research for them a mutual fund has 40 50 brokers with 20 analysts so about 1000 people servicing each mutual fund at all points of time right so the quantity of information available with mutual funds is far faster is far greater second is the speed of information right information also has a time value aaj main agar aapko ek stock idea de do aur woh stock idea if i give to somebody after 5 days you are at an advantage compared to the person who got the stock idea after 5 days because paanch din mein stock thoda to badh jayega so there is a time value to the information now who gets the information fastest is the person who pays most for the information how do people pay for information by trading and commissions so today if an analyst in some brokerage firm has a great piece of idea about a stock he will call hdfc mutual fund and give that idea first because hdfc will say are you buy you know maybe 10 lakh share khareedo if he calls an individual like me i'll say buy 10000 shares he calls the portfolio manager he'll say buy 1 lakh shares now they make commissions on the 10 lakh shares is far greater so you want to call their biggest clients first and the biggest clients are these large mutual funds and therefore they have a big information edge versus everybody else and it's also there in data uh, you know and this is a chart which uh, we've compared the best pms versus best mutual fund and most people stock portfolio the other thing with stock portfolio also is that we end up making mistakes so a lot of people tell me amit i'm a very conservative investor main risk nahi leta i'm not greedy so i said sir explain to me what do you mean by that so he said i get 20% profit i take my money out i am not greedy i said that's a great thing you do but what happens if it goes into a loss i most clients tell me i am amit i have holding power mere ko you know i am patient investor i will hold i don't have you know i don't need money to borrow so i will hold now what actually it means that people end up doing is they are capping the returns at 20 exposing themselves to the full loss 100 rupee loss your risk to reward ratio is Five to one, which is mathematically incorrect. You are in the long term. You are bound to lose money. So what happens is, in a rising market, they keep booking profit twenty, 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 twenty. When the market falls or that theme that I play collapses, they are left holding the basket of stocks which are eventually down eighty, ninety percent because they have stop loss. They have right. And you see, in two thousand eight, so when I look at clients' stock portfolios, 
यू नो टिपिकली आफ्टर फोर फाइव ईयर आफ्टर मार्केट क्रैश यू के नो यार ये दो हजार आठ का पोर्टफोलियो है ये टू थाउजेंड का पोर्टफोलियो है ये नाइनटी फोर का पोर्टफोलियो बिकॉज यू नो दाइंड ऑफ स्टॉक्स देर प्लेंग इन वॉट काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स देट स्टक इन एंड वेन दे गेट स्टक वी जस्ट रिमेन देर सो दीज आर ऑल्सो बिहेवियर बायसेज दैट प्रिवेंट अस फ्रॉम बींग ऑब्जेक्टिव एंड मैनेजिंग आर ओन मनी वेल हियर वॉट वी डन इज जस्ट शॉर्ट ऑफ कंपेयर ऑन फीस म्यूचुअल फंड मच चीपर देर वेल रेगुलेटेड सिंपल बट लॉट ऑफ टाइम पीपल बिलीव यार वो रिटेल इन्वेस्टर के लिए you know i am a affluent agent i invest i don't need i need something more complex and i think it's wrong sometimes you know dal chawal is great for your you know system it's comfort food it solves the problems we don't have to do exotic things to make money mutual funds are in our view the best vehicle to invest uh, in equity markets one can you know the pms and stocks trading is very attractive but you know and and if you read the news last 2 3 months stock trading volumes have gone up because lot of people sitting at home bole baith ke stock trading karte hain Uh, but in the long run, I have seen most people are trading stocks actually only lose money or not make adequate money uh, doing that activity. The other uh, point is around you know real estate. Now, as Indians, we love real estate. We love gold. We love real estate. Uh, if you look at <coughs> RBI data, about fifty, fifty-five, sixty percent of Indian household savings historically have been going into physical assets, which is gold and real estate. इंडियंस में बिकॉज वी बिलीव यार जो चीज को मैं टच कर सकता हूं देख सकता हूं वो मेरे लिए वेल्थ है बाकी ये फाइनेंशियल एसेट्स इज नॉट वेल्थ ग्लोबली ओनली फिफ्टीन ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ वेल्थ गोज इन टू रियल एस्टेट सो एज इंडियंस वी ओवर ऑन रियल एस्टेट एंड टूडे अ पॉइंट इज कम वेर वैल्यूज ऑफ रियल एस्टेट ऑल्सो है सच लेवल्स दैट देर एक्चुअली अनअफोर्डेबल यू नो टूडे इफ यू लुक एट यूरोपियन कंट्री यू लुक एट अमेरिका टूडे द स्मार्टेस्ट यू नो मैनेजमेंट ग्रेजुएट एक्सेट्रा वो स्टडीड वेल can afford a decent living in a city like new york london wherever in bombay the smartest kids have to start 30 kilometers 40 kilometers away before they can even dream after 15 20 years of coming into the heart of you know uh, the city we've made properties unviably expensive for a normal person to uh, sort of buy because we've always that's the way we've deployed our money <coughs> but now we are at a point where supply is massive across cities we are seeing 3 4 years of supply pending supply that is there which means that a collapse already in most cities in india they have seen a collapse bombay we started to see a correction now and our view is that real estate as a structural story residential real estate as a story was over last 7 years i think for the next 10 years also i don't see this uh, coming back until prices come down even further and i think there uh, there's a scope for prices to come down under 30 40% uh, in real estate Uh, right so if any of you hold real estate my firm recommendation in submission to you guys would be please liquidate it as quickly as you can uh, this is not about saying i can hold for 5 years and it will come back in price but 5 saal mein opportunity cost bahut badi hoti hai that if you were to sort of liquidate it today invest somewhere else you are not calculating the loss of return uh, on that asset so <coughs> i only share this data uh, with you Uh, so of course, real estate. You know, we and now of course now it's common knowledge that real estate is weak, but I don't see it improving because the economy is also in a uh, uh, sort of poor uh, situation. But the other thing is, you know, this is the sort of ninth point that in equities, let's never lose sight of the big picture. So one of the ad- other advice I give people: don't watch CNBC. Please do not read the Economic Times, and then make investment decisions. Because where the safe news is, you know, is uh, is is noise. it confuses us it drives us in a herd mentality and we lose sight of the big picture and i have seen so last 15 years i have stopped doing it and i'm talking from personal experience and therefore lot of clients and colleagues come to me to understand the big picture saying amit yaar ye sab theek hai jo dot sun rahe hai everyone's talking you know there's either greed or there's fear what's your take is when you can take a step back and have a 36000 feet view ki kya ho raha actually and how is this likely to play out over the next one year three years five years that is very very important cut the noise out Stop watching TV because वही चीज channel पे चलती रहेगी and I think this is very very important. So even let's say you know given the COVID situation right now, <coughs> I'll quickly share <coughs> you know a two minute view. One is this virus you know and we are not experts on this virus, but I sense is we will have to live with this for the next one one and a half years you know until we have a serious vaccine on the table. Uh, second, the in- impact on the economy is going to be severe. This is going to be India's biggest slowdown that we've ever experienced. this is as close to the great depression as we will uh, see uh, we already lost 20 30% jobs people's incomes are coming down which means consumption will collapse 
वेर एवर पीपल है चॉइस ऑफ स्पेंडिंग की इसमें स्पेंड करना जरूरी है नहीं है जहां भी डिस्क्रेशनरी स्पेंडिंग है दैट स्पेंडिंग विल डिसअपियर लॉट ऑफ बिजनेस विल कोलैप्स you know my sense is 10 20 30 percent businesses will not come out of this alive after a year uh, also in india the challenge is we don't the government has not does not have the money or the willingness to print money to support uh, businesses at this point of time uh, so this is a you know we, which we would have never seen in generations this is a once in a 200 year kind of economic crisis that we are seeing unfold before ourselves but what also it means is two things one is the stock market runs in anticipation of the economy not in line with the economy so the market is already corrected 30 40% most stocks are down on average 35 40% which means 35 40% of india's wealth has been wiped out in a matter of weeks even before the pain is felt so markets always run in anticipation and likewise they will run in anticipation before the economy improves the market should have recovered because markets will second you know sort of move 2 3 4 6 months ahead of where the actual economy so that's keeping that point in mind is very important the third aspect of this is that the largest companies or the best companies in each sector will come out stronger because they will gain market share kyunki unki competition lot of the weaker competition will get wiped out and if you are playing large cap stocks large cap funds those companies will tend to do extremely well and in a backdrop where imagine where paise ki value globally khatam kar di hai the us has put in as much money in one month as they spent in real terms in the entire second world war एक महीने में देव इन्फ्यूज मनी इनटू द सिस्टम दिस इज हैपनिंग ग्लोबली सो इमेजिन अ सिचुएशन वेयर 80 90% ऑफ द वर्ल्ड्स मार्केट्स इंटरेस्ट रेट्स आर जीरो टू नेगेटिव मनी इज अवेलेबल ऑन टैप फॉर बिजनेसेस आई थिंक देयर विल बी अ इवेंचुअली अ मैसिव बूम दैट विल आल्सो कम बिकॉज़ मनी हैज बीन प्रिंटेड एट अ स्केल व्हिच यू हैव नेवर एवर सीन राइट एंड द पीपल हु आर सरवाइव हु सरवाइव दिस फॉर द नेक्स्ट 12 18 मंथ्स विल कम आउट एक्सट्रीमली स्ट्रांग but also asset price inflation will be very very strong so at this point our motto with clients is figure in your personal life in your professional life and in your portfolio how do you survive this 12 months because there is a great boom coming after the pain right now will be the deepest pain we have ever seen but there's a great boom coming later let's identify who are the people who will benefit from that and let's position ourselves accordingly in our uh, portfolios so sometimes you know looking at the big picture is very very important this is sort of nine point the you know <coughs> i won't spend too much time on this but typically we've seen that after big drops we've always seen big recoveries uh, historically we've just tabulated here the last 5 6 7 major falls in india that we had and uske 3 saal baad market pe kya hua and typically markets doubled back in the next few years but i think the point i want to leave you with before i take questions is uh, also focus on the people you work with Uh, as your advisors uh, and i think it's very very important sometimes it's about you know because it's a, it's a business of not just intellect trust likability there various factors and i see that sometimes you know a lot of us get dragged into relationships this is a long term relationship business so financial advisory is a situation where if you choose a financial advisor your hurdle has to be that this is someone i would want to deal with for the next 20 30 40 years is somebody or is this person and is the team somebody who i'm happy to deal with do i like dealing with them it's like building a relationship friendship relationship whatever you may call it right you have to really the people are very very important at the end of the day in this whole business and not try and build transactional relationships with one of care ye banda smart lagta hai iska ek deal kar leta hu uske baad deal kar lete hain that's a recipe for disaster it's as much important to focus on who you are dealing with what's the organization what are the people and it's most importantly the people that actually make an organization and i think spend time trying to get to know them uh, and the backgrounds and what they bring on the table do you really like dealing with those people and the, do you believe in their capability that's sort of the final uh, parting uh, comment from my side uh, so with that happy to take questions uh, gentlemen uh, thank you amit sir uh captain ajay can we take a couple of questions or do we have uh, uh, thank you for your very precise presentation uh, would you like to give any now or can we just welcome uh, dr malli shankar she is uh, already logged on uh, and then after her presentation take the qa amit do you have some time or uh, sorry i have another meeting to run okay. through so, so uh, but so let's We Let's can take a few questions. Or even I have the colleagues as well who can take the questions. You know, so George and Kunal are equally equipped too. But we can, I can, if there's any quick ones, I can quickly run through and not take it too long. 
Yeah, will you just uh, uh, complete uh, the question? Captain Achyutam, you can finish the question and answer with him with, with yeah. an unlimited period. That Thank would you. be better for you. Yeah, so let's take about uh, five minutes. Sure. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. So when we see these graphs, we see how the economy is going up. But is there any um, graph created the economy and how nature sort of uh, treats us when we are removing the resources from the earth? You know, there, there must be a meeting point somewhere. Yeah, so this is the proverbial point where you know you uh, where you know we've always been, you know, and honestly, I don't have an answer for that. I you know we've always you know, and this has been a question you know in the seventies is that we'll run out of oil, uh, we'll run out of you know something or the other. I honestly don't have answers for that. Uh, I think as uh, you know, what we do is really from an investing perspective, saying that those are risks uh, uh, that are out there. How do you sort of you know account for some of those risks? And how do you insure yourself against risk? So I'll tell, I'll tell you, you know, the point is really from an investing perspective angle. All that we tell people is what is in our hand is risk management. What all can happen? Because okay, could somebody have predicted COVID? I don't think any of us out there predicted you know the virus of this scale could hit it. Or even there you know there are speeches by Bill Gates etc. Talks which have, a lot of people have called that this is one of the potentially the biggest crises we could have. It's happened, but nobody could predict the timing of this. So the only thing we can do realistically is manage risks uh, on our portfolio right now uh, how it means you know from a, it's a more profound question that i think political leadership and society needs to answer in terms of how do we look at you know uh, this uh, you know uh, managing our sort of nature and natural resources and the, you know uh, planet around us that's a very profound question honestly i'm not the right guy to answer that Uh, should I step in to answer that? Maybe a little out of turn. Yeah, Malina, you can go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, I, I I think there are governments like Mr. Raki said it is for the government and government policies to do this. There is a slight glimmer of hope. There is news which has emanated today from New Zealand. It says that they are questioning the GDP being the, uh, you know, the barometer for measuring progress. Since 1930s, GDP has been the great measure for measuring progress. They have questioned this. They have said that over the years, if that was meant for a manufacturing world, and today we are in the services world, um, so they have uh, said that they will recalibrate their uh, GDP and include things like, I'm going to quote something from the New Zealand government. It says, if digital services and renewable energy can be delivered without putting extra strain on the planet, then we could continue to grow each year without provoking planetary crisis. Imagine if other things that are currently excluded, but which many of us value entered our calculations of economic progress which is leisure time, unpaid volunteer work, clean air, low crime, longer and healthier lives. There you are, there is a start somewhere in the world. Nanali, you want to take it over? The other Q&As? Yeah, so I, I think there's some questions. Uh, quickly, I, can, I think there are some yeah. questions. Uh, so, you know, uh, the Sensex, one, whether, you know, uh, doing an index fund versus uh, uh, doing an actively managed fund. Uh, so I think, you know, the index fund in India, it's still too early. The alpha, if you see uh, that mutual funds have generated, right? So the index has generated, uh, you know, like I said, 30, 30 and a half percent, but an active mutual fund has generated, you know, over 20 percent for that same period. So the alpha has been significant. Last one, two years, alpha has been challenged. But that's because only few companies are doing well and you will have every 10 years, you'll have these one, two year periods where, you know, few companies will do well compared to rest of the stocks. Our view in a nutshell, it still makes sense to go to go for active managed funds because, uh, you know, the alpha, we still believe a three to 4% per annum alpha is something that these funds can generate in the next five, 10 years. But a point will come in India at some point in the next five, 10 years where index funds will also start to uh, become important. 
and that's when the institutional ownership of the market itself becomes great so I'll, i'll give a simple point to think about this that how do funds make alpha why is one percent return alpha is what the excess return over the index but that excess return that somebody is making is somebody else's lesser return it's a zero sum game you know up if somebody is making extra money it's make, it's because somebody else is making less money who's making less money it's the individual retail investor so india mein jab tak retail investors bahut active hai tab tak alpha you know so 20 years back the alpha in this fund used to be 15 20% because they were so small and there were so many retail investors that you could they are easy cherry pickings with just better information but as institutional ownership is growing they themselves become the market there are less and lesser retail investors that you can make money off so abhi tak the trend is not fully played out <coughs> i think it's another 5 10 years before the trend sort of uh, plays out where index funds will sort of uh, 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 you know uh, make sense so the other was uh, uh, so also the other one was on uh, on hcfc fund uh, yeah they said that the last 5 year returns is as low as 1.3 cagr Yeah. And uh, last ten year returns are closer to the seven eight percent mark, whereas yeah. uh, since inception is of course sixteen point six seven CAGR. So yeah. you know what is uh, even in five year periods, uh, it's not been too much to show. Yeah, so I think you know one is of course don't look at one particular fund itself. I think fund selection itself is a another you know uh, art because I think HDFC funds fund has become like an elephant. right for them to move and navigate and change to market situations they were a fantastic track record through the 90s and 2000s but now they become too large in my view to manage and fund selection itself is a is as much a art and science where we are trying to predict which funds will do well uh, so i think you know in that sense hdfc is not been a right is a great uh, example the other funds have done better but last 5 years i still think <clears throat> you know if you looked at our model portfolio uh, you know our model portfolio is still about Uh, about 12 13% per annum return that the model portfolio generated over the last 5 years so i think it's about selecting the right basket of funds that's as, as, you know it's actually important as well we've not covered it today uh, but that's also an important uh, aspect okay so uh, any other question george uh, so uh, no i believe that's that's it i think uh, the reason so somebody has a question we gave hdfc equity fund is because we were looking at which were the first fund house fund schemes that started in the 90s right so we looked at <coughs> you know uh, the scheme we looked at the flagship scheme just to make it comparable to 30 years because there's no point picking a you know scheme that started 7 years back and picking keep changing the schemes we said which schemes have the longest shelf life so even those schemes for example hdfc today after having underperformed so much in the last 5 7 years but over a 30 year period this is the kind of return creation that's happened uh, right so the point was to make it comparable saying which funds have 20 25 30 year histories and that was the idea of make it comparable not picking the you know cherry picking the best funds that have done well uh, recently uh, i think you know quickly i think from a time perspective the last thing on templeton debt funds uh, uh, i think this is a sort of man made crisis where the government could have acted better to and faster to resolve this because i think the underlying liquidity in the debt market has completely disappeared uh, they reacted too late uh, including liquidity which they have done a little bit now uh, but i think templeton was forced into a situation where they had no option but to shut down the funds and liquidate because people exiting funds would mean that they have to sell at distressed prices and sometimes there would be no buyers only uh, so in a way they have done whatever they could to pr- protect uh, their investor interest at this point of time i think Uh, at least from our firm's perspective, we gave an exit call in March across all debt funds because we saw this happening in the market. Uh, so you know, most of our clients, I would believe, have been able to exit uh, much before this happened. But right now, somebody holds Templeton debt funds. I think there's no option but to hold. I think you will, re- you know, recover a fair bit of that value. I don't think it's money lost. One just needs to be patient for a year to two years now to get their uh, monies back out of those funds right now. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. I think that's the last question that you could probably take. Uh, it's just about uh, where we could probably get reliable information regarding best performing funds. So I think you know best performing funds. So there are enough places where you know there are a lot of these online portals, advisors. There's value research, etc. Morningstar, which will give you you know what are the best rated funds and performing performance data is out there. But looking at best performing funds is like looking at rearview mirror and trying to predict, saying you know this is how we want to go. They will do well in the future. and that's not a great uh, method i think it's about finding an advisor who has some methodology of trying to pick a basket of funds that are likely to do well and how you know because you have to really get forward looking indicators 
saying which are the funds what they have done in the past is great that's one metric but it's not necessarily going to determine what they're going to do in the future because right just let's say somebody at psu banking stocks which did horribly in the past 5 years but they might actually do better in the next 5 years compared to private sector banks who knows so it's about trying to figure what are the themes and the different financial metrics that one formulas and stuff that one can use to try and predict uh, you know which ones will do well it's not uh, a science it's still an art and we also use a lot of tools uh, that we try and predict you know and therefore come up with different ways who's got the best stock ideas in the portfolio for example for mutual funds like for stocks in most stocks we have target prices here a stock that may if i'm buying reliance at 1400 rupees i have a target that it should become 2000 rupees in a year time or two years time or three years time right likewise can you compute a target nav for a mutual fund as well by looking at each of the stocks and saying which fund has the maximum upside based on some of the best analysts in the country so there's a i mean we can spend half an hour discussing it but the point is you need to find an advisor who has a methodology in helping you pick that uh, online there's enough data available as well but that is very that in my view is a little more simplistic and uh, can sometimes just looking at best performing funds in the rearview mirror and then picking them might be counterproductive so great i think uh, amit sir uh, that would all be uh, for the question answers for today uh, we could always take up those question answers separately later and try and get back to each uh, each person who asks these on mail uh, ajay sir uh, i would like to hand over the panel to you and you can take it from thank there thank and you thank you thanks a lot amit sir for your wonderful time wonderful session amit and thank you very much for your time Radiant thank you time. so much thank you wonderful and thank you for having me event also thank you thank you take care take care everyone bye and uh, so it's uh, now time to uh, introduce our uh, guest for the, the, uh, the chief guest for the evening very unique to that uh, madam malini has uh, service and had a great opportunity to work uh, with her when she was the director general of shipping uh, she uh, Served as the Secretary of Government of India, and uh, she's obtained a doctoral degree in public policy in, in institutional economics. And um, there's a lot in her uh, CV and bio, but I still remember one thing, which is very unique. Uh, what she did uh, when uh, she took a chair as a DG was to sort of free look at uh, DG the uh, the maritime education and training in India. And that initiative she took, if we had implemented fully at that time. um our um we the maritime education training wouldn't have would have been a seamless uh, effort during the covid times uh, unfortunately uh, there is a lot of resistance to change and uh, i don't think all the findings of that initiative was implemented uh, but that was a great contribution ma'am and uh, thank you ma'am for being here uh, over to you please thank you very much captain achitan am i audible yes ma'am yeah and uh, good evening to all the participants i'm sure i've been listening in on the last one hour it's been a real uh, uh, a real heavy dose for a saturday afternoon uh, the distinction between a weekday and a weekend seems to have disappeared in the post covid times so what i'm going to do now is not to give you a dose on shipping or on finance i'm going to restrict myself to something which we are all experiencing during the times of covid and leave some thoughts with you uh, that will be more pleasant for a saturday evening so i'm going to share this um, okay okay i'm going to share this slide show the the title the virus said to me is inspired by bhagavad gita saying sanjay uvacha because virus is saying several things to several people uh it's uh, to the rich it's saying something to the migrant it's saying something to the working class it's saying something so there but there are some common thoughts that i, I i'm just going to share my thoughts so it's nothing prescriptive and nothing which is uh, the ultimate truth uh this is a slide i don't know how many of you recognize this this is a slide from which depicts the story the mythological story of uh, vishnu's avatar the avatar of uh, uh, narasimha so there is a very very interesting dialogue there between the father and the son the father happens to be a megalomaniac king called hiranyakashipu and the son is pralad a very little son uh, he is about 5 years old when this dialogue is supposed to have taken place in the mythology 
Now the king says, I am supreme and nobody, everybody has to bow down to me. And the child, Prahalad says, no, you know, God is supreme and he is the ultimate devotee of Vishnu. So he keeps on, you know, doing the job of Narayana, Narayana, Narayana. So one fine day, the king says, this is getting to be too much. I do, there is no God and there is no one greater than me. So Prahalad contests that. And one fine day, the, uh, the king says, okay, son, since you say that your God is everywhere, you have to tell me, where is God? Where is your God? And the child says, the God is in this pillar that is in this court. The God is in the hair that you have. The God is sitting in the place that you hold. The God is in the dust that you stamp on. And this is something when I, you know, this is what the virus, they were talking about the coronavirus. It's everywhere. It's in your hands. It's in your face. It's in the wall. It's on the surface. So what is the difference between the coronavirus and God? So is this coronavirus a demon or is this coronavirus a God? Ultimately, I'm not going into the next stage of the story. If some of you haven't read it, it's when, uh, when the Hiraneka Shikhu says, okay, show me your God. Then is it in the pillar? And the child says, yes. So he breaks the pillar with the mace and out comes Narasimha. And uh, the whole story is about how, you know, as all avatars do, it's a destruction of evil by uh, the victory of good over evil. So, you know, this is what one day the virus told me that I am everywhere, but I am, I mean, I might seem to destroy something, but I am not destructive. Um, so this one, what, does it, what is it saying? It's saying slow down. What are we doing? Look at this. We want, you know, we, we, we discussed about GDP. And GDP is all about growth and wealth creation. It focuses so much on wealth. It forgets other factors like environmental factors. It forgets social factors. All we wanted was greed. Uh, we were wanting to travel everywhere. It's not enough to go to your grandmother's place. And uh, just one second. Uh, it says no have you had your you, you 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 are somebody in society only if you have four vacations a year and that should be abroad preferably to mauritius and to uh, other countries uh, or even maldives so so there is this brand image have you gone to maldives have you gone to this place uh, i have to party every evening i have to you know live life there's only one life and i have to live it I have to generate wealth, not just for myself. I have to generate wealth for my next generation and the generation that follows. I have to raise, ambition is good, but I have to raise, uh, you know, just aggressively. And I shouldn't be, I, I don't care what falls apart, what falls in the way, whether my own life falls apart, whether I'm hurting other people, all that doesn't matter as long as I reach my goal. And that was not the world way the world was about 20 30 years ago also in my childhood this is not the way the world was uh, and everything is mine i mean there's so much greed in society so it's telling you rearrange your priorities uh, look at what you really need look we are living here for the last in india for the last almost 60 days or 60 days plus um, with the minimum uh, resources for example, where I live, I don't get vegetables, I don't get fruits, but I'm not dead. And I, I, I'm not going to, you know, I'm very thankful every day in the morning that I'm not sick and, you know, I'm not in hospital. I don't have, I don't want need an access to a hospital at the moment. Every day you've got to be thankful. And we've been living on minimum clothes, no shopping, no eating out, no partying, and it's been fine. So let's, these are some thoughts. Prioritize what we need. Um, don't look at what others are doing and what, so I have to measure up to them. The third message I'm getting is spend time with family. This is something in our pursuit for wealth, in our pursuit for success, we have forgotten that time. This is one of the priorities. And I remember when I was talking to somebody in the United States many years ago, when the IT boom had taken off. And I said, why are you people working 24 by 7? The typical American lifestyle is... Uh, uh, what you call the Anglo-Saxon lifestyle, you pick up your breakfast, which is a sandwich, and you 
hold it in your left hand and you drive with your right hand get off the office walk and that was the uh, role model for us but that is uh, again a real thing on that now this many of you would have seen a lot of cartoons a lot of uh, pictures which uh, you know uh, communicate such things communication uh, is through even within families is through cell phones smartphones uh, if the mother is calling the child down for dinner on whatsapp or uh, uh, somebody is wishing their family member their spouse and their child happy birthday on facebook i mean what are you trying to do that means you don't have a family you don't you can't live with them with yourself i mean you have to rethink i mean I, this is, as i said it's not prescriptive but the fact that such pictures are coming out means that we need to recalibrate what we are doing recalibrate how the world is going and just be happy with yourself make friends with yourself spend time with family now this negotiate for commerce be generous for charity For paucity of time, I'll try to make this story short. I just read a story, wonderful video by a uh, bit in Tamil. Otherwise, I would have played it for you. It talks about this man is talking about his mother. He grew grows up in a small town, and there used to be a vegetable kira seller. This is the green leafy vegetable seller who used to come every day to sell vegetables. And the mother insistently every day she had to bargain with, "No, can you pour it? Give me a little more. Give me a little more." Take a little less, etc. And this went on for every day, every day. But one day, she found out that this uh, vegetable vendor was having some uh, health problem, and she didn't have money to buy some food. So here she was. This man found his mother sitting there. Um, sorry. Sorry, sorry. and he he asked and the mother was giving that lady food she was still bargaining for the vegetable but then she kept giving you know more food you've not eaten have some more food let me make this for you and every day she was making something for her saying you 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 must take care of yourself you must have enough nutrition so this gentleman asked his mother and he was a child then he said am i you 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 been negotiating her, with her for the pennies but you're giving so much money to her uh, you know free without even asking so she tells them this life uh, you know lifetime uh, advice she says you know when it comes to commerce they don't be ashamed don't do negotiate because that's commerce but when it comes to charity please don't negotiate open your heart out i thought it was a wonderful wonderful uh, story and these are times when you have you know the, the bandwidth to look at these stories and decide what would you like to do in life you make more money more money more money and at the end of it you don't have time to spend money and you haven't shared it with anybody and had the pleasure of sharing it with anybody so that's one story i wanted to share with you now here be kind to nature you know i live near the gateway of india and last month i happened to go it's it's just 50 meters away i could not believe that the sea which was normally absolutely gray grayish black and filled with flotsam jetsam whatever it is it was peaceful blue it was like sailing from cochin to lakshadweep you know the kind of sea you see there it was wonderful so what have we done to nature uh you know i think so the virus is actually reclaiming mother nature reclaiming her right to her own territory and uh, it's her way of saying i'm supreme you might think you're supreme you might think you've conquered the everest gone to the depths of the sea you are you're going to the moon or uh, you are building planning to build cities in space but listen i am mother nature and i am more supreme and that's what she's telling each time she's been telling that when there's a cyclone when there is a typhoon when there is a tsunami but we've not listened and now i think she's sent something which has put this little virus which you cannot see which cannot be seen even in a microscope perhaps and it's held the entire world to ransom so respect nature and i would like to see if i can get this um, to play this video uh, it's a one minute video so bear with me
It's a two-minute video, but you would like it. So that is Mother Nature saying that, you know, I don't need you, you need me. So let's be very kind to nature. Uh, we shouldn't be supporting projects with cut, which cut trees ruthlessly, spoil water, pollute water, pollute air. Give nature a thought every day of your life. Uh, there are other videos which talk about Mother Nature, very poignantly telling, you are my children. But I do have other children, which include the marine creatures, for example, which include insects, the very bee. If there are no bees, there is no life. So this is, these are kind of things that it's time to think. Um, and my last slide, I think it's time to learn from our fellow creatures also. If we observe the animals and we say these are all animals and the human being is supposed to be the most intelligent creature. And if you keep reading about animals, find or you keep moving with animals, you know, whether it is a cat, a dog, a cow, even a crow, you'll find there are so many things to learn. And I want to leave with these two videos that I, they're very short videos. And you, you, you will see the first video is look at the intelligence of this animal. And the second video is about responsibility. So let me just Just look at the intelligence of this creature. I know. Kunal, could you see the earlier video? I thought I did not clear my screen. Okay. Uh, this, yes, this Ma Mani, ma'am. I yeah. I think you have to uh, share the the Internet yeah, Explorer separately, of, uh, separately uh, because we and didn't see the earlier video either. Uh, you didn't see. You close this. Close the share. If you have opened that on huh? the, if you open, if you open the yes. YouTube uh, separately. Yes. Separate okay. Screen, you stop. Stop sharing the screen and then open it separately. Can you see it oh, now? Uh, no, now you start sharing screen. Now you share screen again. And you'll okay. see the your okay. bandwidth is low. Can you? Bandwidth. Okay, uh, I'll just see if I can try to play that. If I can. Yeah, see if you can try to, I'll just close this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Rajesh, are you there? Can you just try that out? Uh, Share that screen. Have you got the website? Yeah, there are uh, two of them. Just yeah. uh, if you can share both of them, it, it, 
very interesting can i get that website name once again please https uh, youtube uh, youtube bio you tu dot be okay backslash 3 id 3 ird 3 ird sorry 3 ird hyphen 5 papa capital victor capital papa oscar 8 Sir, just just once more for me, please. Captain, just, Captain uh, Rajesh, uh, uh, it's been put up on the chat. It's been put up on the chat by okay, Sagar okay. Mana. Okay, just just. Can just click click on that. That's an easy one way to do. Yeah. <laughs> so this has been my learning you know each one uh, each thing which i want to show i have to open separately on the desktop and yeah uh, and share it separately but you are right can... about the bandwidth if you don't have the bandwidth yeah, yeah so it does even we had an earlier presentation by captain ramkrishna he had word and excel when he tried to do this link it was not happening he had to oh okay open okay. to separately so maybe we have to build on that skill <laughs> yes <laughs> there's Capacity. a wonderful uh, program which uh, was conducted two days back you know and uh, skilling we yeah, are we got okay. it now so you can, can just can you see this screen. now yeah yes what voice okay i'm just just And again, there are two boxes down below where the volume have to be. Just stop this, Rajesh. Please stop it, and uh, we'll have to share again. Stop sharing, Rajesh. Yeah. Now share again. Just before clicking, you'll see there are two boxes down below. Share with audio. Online skill development. <laughs> for teaching yeah wow. yeah some call me nature you yeah, start again that's okay kid you can continue from here no problem others call me mother nature I've been here for over four and a half billion years, twenty-two thousand five hundred times longer than you. I don't really need people, but people need me. Yes, your future depends on me. When I thrive, you thrive. When I falter, you falter. or worse But I've been here for eons. I have fed species greater than you and I have starved species greater than you. My oceans. My soil. My flowing streams, my forests. They all can take you. or leave you How you choose to live each day whether you regard or disregard me doesn't really matter to me One way or the other Your actions will determine your fate not mine I am nature I will go on I am prepared to evolve Are you Thank you. Right. Can we see the other two? They are equally short. Rajesh, shall leave that to you. Uh, just try to see if you can get the other two. Uh, can I get that link, please? Again, in the same chat, if we can, please. Okay. Great. So while you're doing that, I work a lot on language and English language, 
if you spell nature the other way it's, it's return you know uh, it, it's you, you can so return to nature is uh, and many times a lot of hidden meanings in this uh, whole like reclaim your miracle reclaim and miracle is spelled the same way <clears throat> So, ma'am, if you uh, kindly put it in the chat, please. The link yeah, I am doing. I am doing it. Thank you. So, uh, in fact, this was my basic question to Amit Rathi also because we have already seen presentations that you are showing the graph of the. Uh, That's the first one. Okay. Yeah. Sagar Manika came. That the graph of the economy is going up, but what about the graph of nature and natural resources and uh, is that going up or coming down and somewhere they got to meet so we read a beautiful book on this called the third curve it is written by mansoor khan uh, the person who made kayamat se kayamat a really good book dr uh, rajesh you got both it's on the chat yeah from the chat Yeah, I got, I got. I'm just playing the first one now, madam. Yeah, yeah. Just see the intelligence of this creature. Just look at that. Once water, once you drink water. Figured out that there is a hand pump in it. Actually, do it on its own, and it's even tied up. Yeah, we can cut it off now. I mean, it just an example. Cut it off. We can close it and go to the second one. The second one, I'd like to give a little background while he is doing it. Um, yeah, yeah, you can you can put it on if it comes, and I can give the story a little later. how responsibly uh, an, an animal can behave and we call a monkey a monkey for all its monkey pranks but uh, i remember as a young uh, officer trainee officer in nagpur i had gone to the then zoo in nagpur which was an apology for a zoo i was standing there in front of a cage which had a bear inside and as very surprised the bear comes it needed water it opened the tap and it started drinking water with its paws uh and then i said oh this is really smart bear then i was completely shocked when you know astonished is the word when it closed the tap after drinking the water and went back how responsible are we that's a question i'd like to leave you with uh thank you for indulging me your time and uh, uh and actually allowing me to speak on something which is closer to the heart than to the mind You no know, shipping you. finance water everything is uh, <laughs> a matter of the mind but uh, i really loved uh, sharing something from the heart thank you captain achutan for thank giving you. me this opportunity and thank you participants for the patience thank you ma'am a new norm for a chief guest has been set now <laughs> <laughs> which is speak from the heart which is speak from the deal uh everybody is going how much more money we stock should i buy what <laughs> and yeah. uh, we, there is something about us and we humble ourselves to that force that great energy which is there i, I just 
uh, yesterday was reading about the difference between dharma and uh, you know moksha and dharma ah, say, okay this is what i got to do in this particular life okay. <laughs> whereas in moksha we realize that living eternally uh, living eternally what would i like to invest in okay uh, would okay. I, you know, that, that's a very powerful thought <laughs> I, i i i think nature and the universe has given us time to think about you know all the time we are saying we don't have time to think we don't have time to think so now that we have time to think yeah. we should uh, think a little more uh, viveka buddhi like they say in marathi yes yeah. think yeah. a little use, use your brains to see what you should think about yeah work life balance so is one of them so what i've challenged anand rathi is the order investment i have like come back next life i want them to ensure that they make the investment and give back to me so, <laughs> so that's like we, we, we accept that challenge okay <laughs> great so, uh, thank you so much uh, thank you very much man it was very nice thank you, thank you and uh, yeah I think uh, we would have time now for a question and answer. No, no, no. Thank you so much. Was... Thank you very really. much. <laughs> question and answer. Sir. This is the fellow who's been bothering me from time to time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you and stay safe. Stay healthy. Okay. Bye. I know that I know. Uh, we will stop. Uh, we will not answer any questions which are there. Just Rajesh and. Uh, Vivek, uh, we will re- respond to you, Rajesh. Vivek, I guess additional response be uh, responding to you separately. Uh, we will re- respond by email to our panelists. Please feel free to contact me on uh, Ajay Achutan twenty six at gmail dot com. Definitely come back with the questions. We will. I'd like the opportunity to thank Chief uh, Guest uh, for being here and. Uh, and i think us uh, that we need to balance uh, our our needs and wants and breeds and come to some uh, aspect of a sustainable future and one of the thoughts is okay uh, if you're coming back into the earth again how would you like it to be and uh, thank anandati for the wonderful support and uh, initiating this whole thing uh, they came in us together thank you for uh, Uh, okay, it's an ethical solution. Uh, we did have a 106 registration, so one gap I'm left is what happened to those 40 people who wanted to join. So we we need to look at that and take responsibility for that. Uh, uh, somehow we do not we're not able to reach out to them. So pardon me for those who reach out. Uh, may our digital system be not yet adept. Uh, Kunal and Raj have been keeping this team uh, very. Uh, A great support from there and all at the background. Uh, you've been doing a great. Job. Uh, all our presentations from Rajesh uh, Nambiar, uh, uh, from Vivek Ratho, who's actually on a ship in China, madam. He's riding a ship and he uh, he's working on uh, artificial intelligence, making a paperless ship. Rajesh presented a paper on uh, okay. uh, cyber security. Uh, Rajesh is a pilot in Cochin. You have met him in Cochin. Uh, Wonderful. Uh, The other is uh, Captain Venkat Sri Ramakrishna in the country who presented on Excel. Some wonderful Excel formulas you developed uh, <laughs> to help ship stability and the other ship board calculations. Something offbeat. And uh, our first presentation also uh, your own Daniel Joseph who told us how to go through the web- NDG website and the IMO documents and he invited twenty mm. five people logged down. So yeah, he showed them how they should uh, keep a track of the IMO documents and. Like brushing their teeth every morning, they need to open the DG website every morning to uh, understand what is new because the rate at which uh, uh, the uh, the instructions are coming out from DG shipping is amazing. Uh, they're doing an amazing job. So uh, the first time, Ajay, okay, maybe you yeah. could uh, switch off your camera because we are also having some issue with your uh, your bandwidth. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. So, so uh, Daniel, thank you very much. For, There have been some questions raised about passport expiries and all that. That has to be dealt with the Ministry of Home Affairs. Daniel has responded to that. But any questions, you please send it to me, and I'll get it answered by the right people. And uh, uh, thanks. Uh, I think um, and Amit Rathi, of course, for um, the well-planned uh, presentation. I know the principles they work on. And uh, this whole presentation has been available on YouTube with you, uh, uh, Sailor Today. Thank you very much. For making this available to 
an audience whom we couldn't reach out to. Uh, the, it's available on the YouTube. We'll share the uh, YouTube connection so that you can have a look at it. And um, that's about it. Kunal uh, and George, anything else? Uh, uh, did I miss anybody? Or uh, can we well, say... That, that covers it, uh, Captain Ajay. We thank you for uh, giving us the opportunity to address this forum along with you. And uh, thank you, the respected speakers. Uh, thank you, uh, Malini, ma'am. Uh, it was great meeting all of you. And I uh, wish you all to keep safe and stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Malini, ma ma'am, are you there? Malini, ma'am? Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. I'm there. Uh, ma'am, so uh, just, just it's a personal thing. I don't know if you remember. I had the privilege of piloting you in from Lakshadweep when you came. Oh. To Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> Pleasure. Okay. Pleasure with you. Yeah. That's Are you still uh, doing that side? Yes, ma'am. Very yes. much. Yes. Take you remember care. the color of the water in Lakshadweep. It's the same color as Bombay water now. <laughs> at least for a few days. It's turned gray again. But at least for a few days. So, you know, but when there were videos coming in saying, this is how the Yamuna is looking, this is how the Alakananda is looking, I had my doubts. But after I saw the waters near the gateway of India, I said, if this can turn blue, then I am convinced that everything else can turn blue. See, this is what we do to nature. Yeah. And as I said, New Zealand is trying to strike out a new policy saying that we GDP alone cannot be a measure of progress. And that's something I would, I mean, if I had any influence, I would advocate around the world. And it had to be led by a woman over there. <laughs> <laughs> you know why the first thing, first time I thought about it was, see how GDP grows. I fall sick, I buy uh, medicine, I contribute to GDP. I go to the hospital, uh, I have an operation, I contribute to the GDP. <laughs> I said, this is not growth, this is not progress. At what cost? What about my health? And the, uh, somebody, the pharmacist or the um, hospital exploits me, but I'm contributing to the GDP. I have unnecessary operations, but I'm contributing to the GDP. <laughs> and if you start thinking that way, then you'll realize GDP was perhaps uh, a relevant point in 1930, but time to review it today. And look at an, an, a 1930s environment was pretty pristine. Not today. So it's time to look at that. Time to look at what about my time for family? I'm just making money and by the time I have uh, I've made money, I don't have time to even enjoy with the family. Those are things. I guess it comes with age, but uh, the earlier the younger generation uh, considers it, the better it is for them. Otherwise, it's I not... If we, if we look at revamping our education right from the beginning, uh, we'll have to... It's a, all order, but we need to do that. Yeah, uh, Captain Achutan, I think it's up to the parents also. Yes, yes. Um, I forgot to thank our uh, the, so the the people who have been viewing us. We got, don't exist without of them. Uh, one of our excited audience was Captain H. Subramaniam. I, I don't see him on the panel now, but he was with us throughout. He's our guru in many ways. And, yes. Uh, Captain yeah. Philip Matthew, uh, yes. company master business. Also, Captain Bai Sharma, some of our faculty were there. And all of you, all of you important to us. And thank you very much for being there and making this happen. Thank, thank you. you okay. Namaste. Uh, uh, once again, sir, thank you, ma'am. Thalim Alim, ma'am, I totally agree with you. Uh, it not has to be GDP alone. It has to be um, gross happiness index. And like, yes. like in the Bhutan we have. And it should have more than 70% of green cover. That will be the actual happiness and uh, prosperity yeah. in the country. Thank you. Okay, bye. Thank you, thank you Vivek. Bon voyage and safe sailing. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We are just departing about in a week's time and uh, hopefully we go for Singapore and then head to towards India and get a relief. Yeah. We are already overdue for uh, four or five months now, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you for keeping the ship. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank we'll you, sir. Thank 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 you, sir. We are ending the webinar now. Yeah, thanks. Thank your team from me, from my side. Anirudh sure. Kumar. Uh, sure.